Hey guys, Doc here to tell you about something that could really give you the edge in gaming. I'm talking about our show sponsor, Fade Grips. Thumbstick grips as well as controller grips that give comfort, precision, and control so you can take your gaming to the next level. Just go to fadegrips.store and check out all they have to offer. And with our promo code, CAG20, at checkout, you can get 20% off your entire order. That's fadegrips.store with offer code CAG20. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 29 of Cross Atlantic Gaming. I'm your host Risky the Kid and joining me this week are my co-hosts Doc H1X1. Hey what's up? Chocolate Bear. Hello thanks. And in our rotating fourth chair community member Chaotic. Hey guys. Chaotic welcome back to the show. You were actually here was it last week or the week before? Mm, two weeks ago I think it was. <laughs> two weeks ago that didn't work out. No. We had to scrap that whole recording. So if there's anything you uh, missed there, we'll make sure we give you a chance to talk all about it. Fantastic. Um, First up, we do have a new Patreon, a new patron this week, um, and that is Free Radical. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks for the support, Free Radical. Um, If you want to be like Free Radical, you can head on over to to (laughs) patreon.com slash C-A-G podcast. Um, our Patreon drawing is actually next week, next episode. So you still have a week if you'd like to get in on that. Um, head over, check that stuff out. Uh, we reworked some of the goals as well, so you can look into those. And yeah. Um, all right, next up, we have a contest going on, the Snapshot Contest. And we have a winner for that. Chocolate, who is it? Well, it is true. The more you send in, the more chance you have to win. <laughs> no, 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 no. That is not exactly true. Not the best uh, we don't we're wanna, trying to spread we're, here. Yeah, we're not trying to say that either. <laughs> no, there was a diamond in all Dan Pod's rough <laughs> clips that he sent in. Um, so, yeah, Dan Pod is the winner. The, Woo! So Hell yeah. Congrats. The, the clip, in fact, was the almighty, uh, I think it was the frag, sticky frag grenade clip where he's just hanging out of a, a chopper and just mows down about three or four people then chucks a, a grenade into a window and then gets another kill it, uh, <laughs> it was it, an impressive it, impressive clip it not only was impressive but it just seemed so super casual in the way he did it too he's just like oh it looks like there's a platoon of guys in that house okay you're dead you're dead grenade you're dead okay fly on next grouping yeah yeah just, um and to, you know, top trumps to his uh, his pilot, the uh, the guy who was who was maneuvering that chopper did uh, he did very it. well. He stayed who, it well. Who that? Who that? That was you. I, t- I did it. Do I win something? <laughs> well, you assisted recognition. Dan. <laughs> so I'm gonna take half that money, Dan. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you. And then um, there's some honourable mentions. There was Cobo's awesome attack on a tank. I think it was just him. V1 a tank. I think he uh, managed to get some sticky dynamite on it and flew one of his rockets at it and destroyed that. So that was a pretty awesome clip. That was in Battlefield 5, right? Battlefield 5, Correct. yeah. And, and then, we mentioned the Dan Pods. I mean, we don't have to even say it, but it was Blackout. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, that was Dan the Potter. game. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> Weird. Well, I mean, you were playing with him, Risky, so it, yeah, it had to be Blackout. It would True. be nothing I got, else. I got that in Lego Island confused, sorry. <laughs> in my what defense you know you know same uh, game mechanics isn't it and then uh one last honorable mention is actually chaotics which sounds really weird because he's on the show but his kamikaze in battlefield just driving his what was it an atv or so, so, right some sort of like half half track or something yeah that was a, that was a personal favorite of mine <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um those clips will be on the YouTube channel after the podcast drops on Tuesday. So I'll aim to get it for about 1 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. GMT time. So look out for that. And there'll be some new music in the backing as well. So Woo! enjoy Quick question, one. Chocolate. Do do I have to say goodbye to that, that thumbnail? Because I don't know if I'm ready to let go of that one thumbnail. That thumbnail okay. disappeared very quickly oh, after uh, someone kindly made me a, a nice one. 
Okay. But no, we R. definitely R. need to post that somewhere. <laughs> in the we trash. need to preserve it in history for uh, where it's tweeted gone. out. Posterity no. sake. Yeah, don't let me do any type of art whatsoever. <laughs> Also, for anyone who's wondering, the Giants just beat the Bears, so Ladonian suck it? Okay, continue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say anything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now I can focus on the show. Perfect. <laughs> um, all right, yeah. So, congrats, Dan Bod. Um, yeah, good work. Send in your clips. Good job. Um, all right, another week in gaming. What has everybody been up to? I think Chocolate, you probably had the best week in gaming, and it's because of a new hardware purchase. Why don't you tell us about it? Oh, I somehow reluctantly, accidentally, on purpose, got a Switch. <laughs> were um, you drunk? <laughs> funny enough, we were at the uh, the champagne bar in <laughs> in the shopping center that we went to. So. The champagne bar. R- huh? Real That's quick, going to throw accurate. out Posh Bear had a weekend, folks. <laughs> let me tell you. So. Also, do they sell switches at champagne bars? <laughs> also, there? where is this champagne bar? <laughs> no, I got one of the people to go get me, fetch me. Yeah, there. I was going to say, oh, the chocolate. <laughs> chocolate's like one of these people who drive to McDonald's and managed to come away with a Domino's. <laughs> <laughs> Just going out for a light lunch, that was all it was. Um, <laughs> Just a light lunch. Anyway, so I managed to butter up my wife, and she went and got me a switch. So he gave her enough champagne (laughs) until she agreed. And yes, I won. So yeah, I've been jumping on Breath of the Wild, Zelda. Um, Good first purchase. Yep, only about an hour in, enjoying it. And I also picked up uh, 1-2 Switch, because I had a a play of that at a meetup. Questionable second purchase. (laughs) <laughs> Agreed. Funny, funny enough, you're not the first person to say that either. <laughs> Have I you want... milked the cow? And second question: Has your wife walked in and wondered what you were doing? <laughs> in that game? I bought that game to play with her, so you know. Uh, oh, okay. okay. So right. you guys well, can milk the cow together, d- possibly. Um, and as it's, oh, well, it's just after nine. I mean, I could, we could go blue movie here, but uh, maybe not. I don't even know what that means. I don't know what that saying means. <laughs> um, <laughs> t- I could go dark chocolate bear, but anyway. Oh, okay. We don't. Yeah, we don't need that. We oh, don't need. Gotcha. That. <laughs> Not yet. So yeah. So that's re- what a blue movie is. Really happy with my switch, um, but they make the, everything very complicated in trying to sign up. Um, you would just think you could do it on the console and that's it, but no, you have to send it to your email address to press on a button for them to send you something back to send you another code. Huh, that's weird that Nintendo isn't intuitive when it comes to I was going to say, you thought this was going to be easy? <laughs> oh. Well, t- I mean, after I was like five, six, ten beers in, I did think it'd be slightly easy. <laughs> it was not. Uh, so, yeah, and also I've jumped on FIFA, as always, so that's boring. Don't worry what? about that. Uh, Have you uh, thought about uh, purchasing FIFA on the go for your Switch? No, no I'm not going to. I'm, I'm going to try and go strictly first-party games only. Okay. Um, okay. Saying that. Accidents do happen, so we'll wait and see. <laughs> so we just got to get you back to the champagne bar before you pick up some third-party games? Yeah, well, I've got to take my wife there. You know, she might be able to drop some pocket money in my uh, in my, in my my way, really. That's, uh, that's all that's... <laughs> that's all that's stopping me getting more games. And I've jumped on Fallout 76, which... Um, oh, my God. That is a good game. And buggy as hell. What Both I was going to say is yeah. that Chaotic... <laughs> probably talked a bunch about that a couple weeks ago before we had to cut that whole podcast out so <laughs> i have been stewing for two weeks week. <laughs> long story short he said it was trash moving on yeah. <laughs> now but i yeah. am what were you gonna say chocolate i'm sorry i was gonna lean it over to you you're the i suppose resident expert really at fallout i've well i've well been trying to play a bit co-op, bit solo as well. I've got two characters set up on it. Uh, one I had saved from the beta already. Um, end of the day, it's a Bethesda game. Were people not expecting it to be buggy? Um, this whole lack of story. Um, I get Doc had. Did you have the invisible enemies that you I, said you were struggling with? Uh, I have. I have come across one. I mean, I got past it though. I, I, I threw grenades at it and it died. So. There we go. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, bugs happen. I like I like I said in my story last week. Like there are bugs. I don't get why people are shocked by that. But yeah. you don't think he just yeah. had active camouflage on or something? <laughs> no, because he because uh, basically uh, it was nothing was there. I could hear him in the audio. Uh, it was supposed to be a super mutant. I could hear him in the audio. It said there was one left. He was on the little uh, indicator on my compass for showing where he was, and um, and I started to melee the air, and his health went down. So yeah. Nice. Well, good work. Yeah. Sure, it wasn't the predator. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, although that would be awesome if uh, if the predator was in this game, because uh, you know the Mothman is, so anything's possible. <laughs> but I was saying uh, you can go ahead, chaotic. I was just uh, I was just kind of confirming some of the bugs, though. Yeah, the the one that's really irking me is the the lack of story that people are saying. Um, now I get that there's no NPCs to hold your hand through the full game and guide you to point to point, but a tiny little bit of exploration and yeah, it's not the nicest, but having to go through terminals and things like that, you actually pick up that there's a really deep storyline involved in it. Um, I didn't really focus on the, the story part when I was doing the multiplayer, but if you jump in solo and you just take your time to read sort of every diary every terminal you actually find out that there's like you basically find out the backstory of the scorched um which is quite interesting to find out what's happened with them and how how they all came about so i think people who are taking it at surface value and not having any storyline are just either being lazy and not exploring for it or don't have the patience to delve sort of into the the terminals to get into the the meat of the storyline See, I jumped in with um, one of the community members, uh, 10,000 Fists, and I do find if you do it as a multiplayer game, you don't concentrate on the story whatsoever. Yeah. You are, you're chatting, you're trying to take out enemies together, and you, you lose that story element of the game. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Um, you're, you're focusing on events and things like that. And yeah. yeah. However, the fun factor is still way up there. Um, exactly. I, I haven't jumped in solo yet, so I don't know, obviously, how the story's going to grab me just yet. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing I don't get is that uh, since when did, like, and not that this is a good or a bad thing about Bethesda, but, like, I don't think anybody would call the NPCs in Skyrim or Fallout 4 as anything short of, like, wooden NPCs. Like, since when... I, I don't get that, why that is deemed as, like, rich storytelling just because you have wooden NPCs around, like, yeah. to guide you through stuff. Like, I mean, it, I don't think that was ever the best part about those games anyways. Like, I think what the problem is, is people are saying there's no storyline because there's no NPCs to guide you through a story. So, right. like, if you, if you think 76, for example, if you speak to uh, the guy in, like, Preston Garvey, if you speak to him... If you go and speak to the people that are in Diamond City, they are the ones that sort of advance your... Right. They're the ones that advance your storyline, whereas in this, the only way of advancing the story is getting into the terminals. So it's, yeah. it doesn't feel like it's got a storyline to it because you're having to dig for the story. I, I could almost understand like the, vo the lack of voice acting. I can almost understand that kind of... Mm. Like taking that, you know contrast with it as far as like you know not having like a lot of different voice acting and stuff but but yeah i i, I just i i look at this as a different way to go about telling a story and and it is very different but i i'm like you i don't necessarily have any major issues with with that aspect of it yeah like as i said like having played through in the multiplayer like storyline and the the person i'm playing online with we're saying that they feel like there's no direction to it, which if you're playing multiplayer, there isn't because you're literally just going from point to point, doing yeah. quests, doing events. But when you slow the pace right down to actually focus on trying to figure out what the story is, what, they, what I've came across so far is really well fleshed out and makes you actually question everything that's going on around you. So oh, I, I totally agree. Like I was telling them last week, did you do the quest of the... Uh the uh, the kind of the school of the comic not comic I don't know what the best way to say it I can't remember the exact quest line name but uh, it's the headmistress and her disciples that are like kind of superheroes almost I've I've got the quest I haven't done it yet though. yeah like that quest line and the hollow tapes you get in it and a lot of the story you uncover is in my opinion one of the best ones I've ever done in a Fallout game um so you know I mean that. You know, I, and that's only you know a couple that I've come across so far. But it was really good, though. 
Um, and again, most of that story is told through like hollow tapes and terminals. But. Exactly. And I think that it's been sleeted because of that. Which I can understand because it doesn't flow like a normal video game. Um, you do have to dig to try and get any sort of gratification out of the storyline for it, but it's whether or not you're willing to do that. Yeah. yeah I agree. I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm still playing it, still having a lot of fun. I just got past uh, level 10, I think. I'm not as far as you, definitely for sure, but... Um, but I, I spend a lot, and to be fair, I spend a lot of time in my last play session building up a base and stuff like that, which is one of my favorite parts about that is how that's, yeah, I always, I always loved that part about Fallout 4, but then I always hated how you had to do it at settlements and they gave so much room and you, you were stuck to that settlement and stuff. And this is like, hey, anywhere you can put it, go right ahead. And it's it's pretty cool. I like it a lot. So. Yeah, I, I quite like for the, um, you, you, you quite, I quite like how the fact that you're, your camp is quite a tactical decision as well. So totally. instead of just as a, as you're saying in Fallout, most people would have had their, their base at um I'm trying to think of the name, uh, Sanctuary Hills. That was this sort yeah. of go to base and, um whereas this one it's like do you have your base next to a water supply? Do you have it near yep. a place that's well defended, like the golf course I was telling you about, for example. So there's a lot of different things to factor in when you're making a base. Yep. Yeah, actually, my, my my one right now is built up on a hill overlooking the golf course, which the biggest problem right now is I don't have access to water, but I don't have a water purifier yet, so it's not as big a deal for me yet. Um, you just I don't want to ruin it too much for you, but um, you're going to have a bigger problem now that you're over the uh, level ten. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I won't t- I won't tell you what it is until you until you ruin it for yourself. I was going to ask you, how frequent are you coming across plans? Because I'm not coming across them very frequently, I feel like. The, um, the, the plans are few and far between as far as what okay. I've found. Um, what I think I, I might have asked you that, but I wasn't sure. But yeah, I was thinking that they weren't very plentiful. What I had realized, that it, or what I realized um, quite a wee bit after I started to play it is um, you usually actually pick up quite a lot of plans, but I didn't realize you didn't get the items until you went into your pit boy and read the plans yeah yeah exactly. so i had quite a few to sort of stockpile after that but yeah unless you're using the vendor system um i'm finding them few and far between Which um, i know that if you do the daily and weekly quests um i know you can pick up plans through that oh i didn't know that okay cool so all right so the big question here is how much longer do you guys think you'll be in here chaotic i know you're like a super fan so probably a while for you but for someone like doc how um, i don't know how long do you think you'll be in here is there, a, there enough of a carrot at the end of the stick i guess yeah i think there's just enough things to do of openness that i could see myself coming back to this for a long time it doesn't you know for better or for worse games that don't have a finite story with a finite ending and they have dailies weeklies events stuff like that are for me that is enough to keep coming back the same way I do with stuff like Sea of Thieves or other games to where, you know, it's just the game is still fun to me. There's still things to do. I'll, I'll probably, you know, will I be playing this as much like six months from now as I am now? Probably not, but I'll still probably be playing it off and on. You think you'll so. be playing it as much as you've been playing Sea of Thieves lately? I'm actually <laughs> looking to get back into Sea of Thieves. I definitely hit a wall there for a while, but they have added a lot of stuff since I've been out of it, so I need to get back into that, actually. It, it, I, there's yeah. about like eight games I'm getting on a rotation now, and I just don't have enough time for all of them sea of thieves just had a update last week didn't they yeah i actually jumped back in the other day and checked out a lot of it it's uh that game is much 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 more fleshed out than even six months ago let alone like a year ago now where i guess it's approaching like eight months of its life i guess or so but um a lot of stuff like variations like the kraken has variations now it's much more deadly now uh the uh big sharks have variations and the ones you can fight you get loot from all those creatures now when you kill them all the skeleton forts which before only four of the i think four of the eight i don't know i don't know if there's eight or how many but like only half the skeleton forts were ever in use now all of them are oh that's good um there's different stuff to haul around now like you have plants that you have to keep watered uh there's some silks that you can't get wet or they're ruined like things like that that you haul around that you have to do stuff with how do you do that oh don't isn't there robots now Yes. So you'd have also to that too. Robo so you'd have to, the, yeah, or just get right up next to the dock, you know, either or. Um, but like rowboats, you pretty much have to use for like the volcanic islands because if they start, um, you can't get your boat close enough, and if they start erupting and spewing like 
molten lava and ash in the water, the water boils and oh, it man. actually would kill you before you would swim back to the boat. So you have <laughs> to use the awesome. rowboat. I'm sold. When are we playing? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm thinking about getting a community session in because that game is way more fleshed out now than it. Like I said, even if it was like three or four months ago, uh, there's now fog in the game, which gives that game a super. Pirates of the Caribbean yep. spooky feel to <laughs> what it. What I was just thinking of. Uh, and it re- but it, it does because, like, I was just playing on a sloop and literally a galleon almost sideswiped me and neither of us saw each other coming. And <laughs> the only way to get around that is to actually utilize the crow's nest now. That's like, amazing. you actually have a reason to have somebody up there now. Um, Seems like they they did the game uh, and then all the little issues of, like, why would I use the crow's nest? They finally thought, oh, here we go. There is the reason to force someone up there. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, before you could argue that having a lookout up there to scan the horizon for boats and stuff, there was a use in it, but now it's like a requ- Like, if you're in fog, you need to, so you don't, like, literally, Smash like, Titanic rock. hit an iceberg <laughs> yeah, yeah, or something yeah. like that, you know? So, because it's thick. And, like, and I, people have already posted on Reddit, like, running into, like, a crack or a crack or a megalodon in the fog, and it is scary as hell, some of the stuff they posted. So, oh, that yeah, brilliant. we it, it'll be fun to get back into. I'm excited to kind of get, get going in that. And they've already announced that, uh, you know, they've got three separate teams working on content updates every three months, and they're due for the next one in about two months now, and they're getting ready to do another roadmap for the next three big updates. So they're still chugging along. It's pretty getting getting much more fleshed out though well speaking of persistent online games that none of us have enough time <laughs> to play uh did you, any of you guys get to try out red dead online that dropped last I, week i did i did not no i've not bothered with it either uh i dipped my toes in it and the one thing doc you you played a little bit of it right I've, I've probably played about three hours of it at this point okay how terrifying was the uh character creator like how oh man did you see um, the faces on all of them like all the options yeah and and there's no way not to make a i don't think there's any way not to make a fairly hideous character also is, like i don't is that intentional think, like do i eventually I, level up and get like good plastic surgery I, options I, down the road I don't, or? I don't think so i think that's kind of intentional because the bet the thing that got me was like i'm a big guy i like about i, I care a lot about oral hygiene and teeth and Ugh. Those the, options. Your guys, the best option for your guys' teeth is not a good option. Full yellow and, set, <laughs> and some are chipped and missing. And it just, I couldn't, I could, I had to get off that screen right away. Like it just hurt me to look at that screen. So I'm just like, I can't deal with this. One of so. the options was is called Gummer, and you have no teeth. <laughs> no, <laughs> or that. <laughs> Which I gotta admit, I gotta admit, there's a this I, something they surprise me with online is how many like little cutscenes there is, and I have to imagine the Gummer is one of the better ones to have for those cutscenes. Oh so God, or maybe worse I missed ones. out. <laughs> or, or, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe. So my idea here was when I was creating my guy, I was like, he's so ugly that I need to put the most amount of hair on his <laughs> head so that I can't see the hideous face. <laughs> so my guy just has a bunch of long hair and a giant bushy beard <laughs> just hiding everything literally just hiding his oh, so scary um <laughs> the online is cool though how there's like story beats like the whole first i want to say hourish was a tutorial before i could even mm-hmm. link up with i was playing with dan um and then once you do link up you can do more story missions together you can do like horse racing which Sounds so boring. I Did you click into any of those or try those out? So, uh, real quick, the thing that I find the least fun about online is the set multiplayer stuff they have. I find that stuff to be the least fun because I've never particularly felt like that game controls particularly well. So, like, a lot of, like, King of the Kill or King of the Hill, like, little online team deathmatch game modes, I don't play those at all. I played, like, one or two, and I'm like, this is not why I would enjoy this online mode at all so i pretty much did everything but those like set races or king of the hill stuff like that did you play any of the grand theft auto like online team very Death little that kind of stuff okay. very little i any, any i did i did in community plays with you guys so i would assume that, was, that yeah. feels similar it, it did yeah as far as well i would say a little bit more straightforward than even that stuff probably auto I'm sure they'll get there flick yeah, up a little it, bit for headshots actually yes literally that <laughs> that's that <laughs> which that's probably the thing that I maybe wish they would have advanced or gotten away from that they didn't in Red Dead 2. But 
you know it is what it was, is uh, oh the auto aiming and how yeah it, it just it feels it old yeah it i don't know the people that are good at it are really good at it though i'll say that yeah not um, great um the coolest thing though is just actually like doing cowboy stuff with friends like doing things you were yes. doing in red dead but actually yes having a headset on and talking to someone who's like riding a horse next to you. I was playing with Dan. Totally agree. And for whatever reason, we were riding our two horses down the road, like right next to each other, like keeping pace with each other. And then you'll get a prompt in the bottom right that says jump horses, like hit X. Yep. And yep. we didn't say anything, but somehow as soon as that popped up, we both hit it at the same time. And our dudes just jumped <laughs> from the horses we were on, like across each other and then landed on each other's horses. Like simultaneously, yep. it was the most ridiculous thing but you can do that with like stage coaches like you know obviously like from single player like trains things like that but there's there's a lot of like little hidden i guess moves you can do kind of thing like that um and it's cool like the first few missions you end up having to like take down gangs or stuff like that and just yeah doing that like the stealth is minimal in this game but it'd be like all right dan you go around to the back um you got those two targets back there and then like on the count of three we're just gonna light these dudes up and like just playing with a friend doing stuff like that as an outlaw is super cool yeah. like you said i'm not all really about king of the hill and team deathmatch and stuff in my western yeah. kind of feels silly but i i will say like i can't wait for us to get a community play on this because this that that was where i was having the most fun though was when i would group up with somebody like that that is definitely where that game or that that online mode is going to shine. I did see um, that if we want a permanent posse, we do need to have two hundred bucks, which seems like a decent <laughs> which I'm amount working of money. on that. I think I thought I was I thought I was rich at forty five after doing some missions. So uh, yeah, so you thought uh, it was real money? <laughs> no, no, in game well, two hundred bucks. <laughs> well, you can't spend real money yet, but. But once you can, I'm sure yeah. once we'll you buy, can, up, you can buy up all those up. bear bonds. <laughs> yeah, and then we can finally play uh, with our friends in a posse. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to knock out one of the th like just so I'm not harping all the negatives, I'm going to knock out a couple of negatives I have with it real real quick just so I can talk more about the positives. The, and I want to see what you feel about this too, Risky. The biggest negative I've had so far is that the map is the same map as single player. It's a humongous map. But it will randomly start you at different locations. Why? And if you're and if you're Why? with a friend, it does not start you with a friend, and you could be literally thirty minutes apart from each other with no way to fast travel to so each other. It will spawn you in in two different locations. Not even at your you camp either. Yeah, I see. That's the thing. We got I got spawned in in the same place or like rel relatively close, but like we got spawned in nowhere near the camp. One, like one of the times you went in. Okay, so like, at least it spawned what? you in together. See, I've, I've been playing with somebody, and it didn't even spawn us in the same region. Like, that, Yeah, that's weird. That's annoying. That That's the one thing I hope they fix the quickest, because that part I found super annoying, especially if you're just looking to, you know, play with friends and, like, group up and do stuff. Um, the... Uh, yeah, I mean, that that probably is the main thing. And I, I would say the second thing is there doesn't seem to be, and maybe this is just because I haven't got far enough yet, but you basically pick up missions from strangers. They appear, it just says strangers on the map, and you can go to different locations to get them. I've even went to the uh, McFall, uh, what's her name from the first Red Dead game. Um, her ranch, well, spoilers for single player too, but uh. like her ranch, and she's in the game. And, and you can pick up missions from her online too, um, Miss McFall or whatever. And, um, she was one of the ones I did my last one of my last missions for, and they're scattered throughout the world, which those missions are cool. I've done everything from, like, kill a guy for a dude. My, it's funny. There's an honor system online, but then all the missions you get from people are all bad missions <laughs> or, like, like if, if you're, like, a bandit, basically. Like, the only decent one I've had is for Miss McFall. I went and recovered her stagecoach, which still required me to kill tons of bandits, but... Uh, like this other guy went up to, he's like, hey, this guy stole my girl. Go kill him. And I'm like, oh, I guess that's the only objective here. Okay, cool. I don't have a choice. That was funny. <laughs> one of the um, first missions you have to do, you have to track down these guys who robbed like a, a mayor yeah. or a judge or something. And yeah. once you get them, you the guy's like, all right, just throw them on the train tracks and leave them. And so <laughs> yeah, you do yeah. that. And like, I was, I had three people at that point, I think. Um, and then, so everybody throws them on the track, but then it says leave them or take them off the tracks. And it's kind of like a voting system. Like you can tell who's voting to leave them and who's voting to pick yeah. them up. Three people just decided to leave these dudes on the railroad tracks. And then we sat there and watched them get 
destroyed by a train. So <laughs> that was interesting. So, well, yeah, maybe there's more choices then because then, like I said, I did another mission where I had to go rescue this guy's buddy. What he didn't tell me is that he was trying to be arrested by uh, sheriffs, and so I, it gave me no choice because they immediately spawned as an enemy. I had to go in and kill, like, three sheriffs. I'm just like, okay, well, so much for the honor system in my online playthrough. So, like, it, it does seem like even though there's an honor system, it like when you pick up a mission, it's kind of this is how the mission is. Like, maybe I'll start seeing more like you've got risky to where I can actually choose one way or the other. But, um, which I don't actually have a problem with any of that. I mean, like, whatever, you know, the honor system, I don't know if that actually ends up mattering on much of anything. But, uh, but yeah, I, but what I was getting back to is what I've had an issue with so far is there doesn't seem like there's enough stuff to do structured wise. And maybe I just haven't unlocked enough stuff yet is maybe the like issue. Like big heists but, or something like that. Yeah. Well, that or even like, uh, I don't know. Um, I guess I was just expecting from how blown out Grand Theft Auto Online got to be that they were going to kind of have the same, and maybe it's just a gradual thing with this, but uh, yeah, I'm just kind of waiting until... Um, Is that the train coming in? To, uh, <laughs> that's got to be a dog. Goes. That's got to be a dog. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I and, and like I said, I'm pretty early on, so maybe there is, and I've just not unlocked enough stuff. So Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm definitely excited to see... Uh, what they're going to add and definitely just to put more time into this. Like we were just rolling around with just two people, but you can, uh, I'm not even sure how many you can actually roll with. I'm assuming at least four. I know. I I mean, I think if you get on the same server, probably even more because I know I've been watching some streamers and they've definitely had more than four people rolling around together. Okay. So, I mean, so. yeah, just, I don't know, doing red dead stuff with friends. It's, it's going to yeah. be fun. And the grind, yeah. Has already started. Who's gonna, who's gonna buy the best stuff, and who's gonna spend the most real life money to get the best stuff? That might be the one thing that keeps me out of staying sticking with this long term. You were asking me about Fallout seventy six. It's weird to say, but I see more of a future in that for me than Red Dead Online. Is as weird as that is to kind of say, but it's only because I already started to feel the grind for the money. And that was only after a couple of hours. Until they really. introduce some new ways to earn money, I guess. Uh, and Red true, Death. and and which I've I've heard from a lot of people that Grand Theft Auto's online economy has been broken for a while, so you know, it, yeah, it might not matter. But that's the thing. Like some of the most fun in Grand Theft Auto Online was those like three part heists or four part heists, yeah, and, like just yeah. getting ready for all that, and then having the one guy that was in control of flying the helicopter to evac us and it's like if he crashes that helicopter it doesn't make it there in time like the whole thing's screwed and you lose friends yeah. and you have a laugh you have a cry it was, it was a lot of fun so which which we like you said we, i know those are coming so you know it'll be interesting to see what they are when they add them and stuff like that so. all bank heists yeah. and train robberies because i think that's all you could do in the wild <laughs> west <laughs> train robbery there will definitely be a train robbery i would put money on it so yeah yeah so, I, I mean, I definitely need to put some more time into it because, I, like I said, I've only played through a few missions, but um, I don't know. So far, so good. We'll yeah. see how it, how long I actually stick with it. I'll have to jump in. I'll have to see how it is. Yeah, after yeah, Doc spends wanna... his real life $200 to buy us a posse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that, I, see, I didn't know that it cost 200 to do that, and I'm kind of like, oh, man, I'm a ways away from that. And it was not a quick process getting to the amount I've got right now. So. And that's why I'm wondering, is it, like, what is the benefit of having – because, like, you just start up temporary posses. Like, that's how you play with so, your friends. But Well, that's what I was about to ask you because I know you can start up – yeah, just a – I guess what would be considered a regular one. What is the difference, I guess? One know? cost $200. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really cool. Trust me. Is it two hundred dollars each, or is it is it like a buying system? It'd be like the the owner Probably. of the posse, yeah. or like the the leader. He would pay the two hundred dollars, and then the posse would be there. It would be like in Grand Theft Auto, where you ah, could okay. buy like an LLC. Um, so you'd be like the the CEO of a company, but you had to pay to buy like an office building to actually be able to start doing your like smuggling and all that kind of stuff. So I see <laughs> okay. that being as an LLC does right exactly. <laughs> so. Um, I would assume it's kind of the same thing. And, like, if you're the one that bought the posse, you're probably taking the biggest cut or, like, you're getting something, um, some type of overhead that everybody else isn't getting on missions, maybe. I don't know. 
a lot of this is just speculation for me because I haven't really looked that much into it. But is this is this a game that you see yourself really getting into, risky or um, like the online mode? I don't know. I should probably beat the single player <laughs> before before yeah, I get too I, into I still this. Have to do that too. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just I don't think it's gonna rival Grand Theft Auto Online because Grand Theft Auto Online is just the perfect like setting for a giant open world kind of online thing. Well, you have enough variables, of... don't you? All well, right. Whereas yeah, the Wild West, you don't unless like all chocolate, of a sudden yeah. Doc Holliday comes in with his exactly like car. And even just takes you back to the having future. a car <laughs> in Grand Theft Auto opens up like it's just that one that one small thing. Just a car makes so much in Grand Theft Auto possible. Like so many different super fun modes, like the racing, destruction. Like demolition derby, that kind of stuff. Um, I don't see that with like horses. Like I don't want to be able to drop or like <laughs> hook a chain gun up to my horse. And <laughs> you say that now. But that's true. <laughs> but but I do like the whole Doc Holiday <laughs> theory where he's going to show up, and just start bringing stuff from the future into Red Dead, oh my just God, so that, that they that would be the can have perfect things. out. <laughs> God. Yeah, the train comes in. His kids come what up. Have you got? Let's see what the Back to the Future guy has for us this week. This week he brought back an M4A1 carbine. Exactly. And <laughs> you will win every King of the Hill the match. The DeLorean is already in Grand Theft Auto Online, so why not have Doc Brown? <laughs> the ca- the cannon has been laid out. <laughs> it's possible. So Yeah, it's... I don't know. I think we even are. I think we talked about that before even the game was out, how, like, the possibilities were just going to be inherently limited, though, right? I mean, like... You know, like you said, like unless they just start introducing like the Model T Ford, and it's like <laughs> you're having drag races with that vehicle. Right. But in, even like, the then, Wild West. you're still so limited. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'm excited for Grand Theft Auto Six online. <laughs> <laughs> that's the real. That's the real that's story. That's, yeah. every, that's yeah. what everybody's getting excited about. Yeah. Um, all right, what else is on here? Um, Chaotic, how are you doing in AC Odyssey? You still trucking away with that? Yeah, um, I was actually having a debate about it with, uh, with the person I game share with about what was a better single player game, um, Red Dead or Assassin's Creed. Um, and we sort of, maybe quite controversially, came up to the agreement that Assassin's Creed's a better experience than Red Dead. Um, You're not the Red first Dead person had, that I've seen that say that either. Yeah. So. Red Dead is a visual and storytelling masterpiece, but it it lacks the one thing that you want from a game. Fun. And that's fun. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. You basically yeah. spend 95% of your time in a cinematic camera going from one side of the map to the other side of the map and then You're back to wrong. the other side of the map. And yeah. my my friend who I, I was speaking to with, he was one of the biggest geeks for the first one. Couldn't wait for the... The next one had the game ready installed from midnight so he could get on it as soon as possible. And even he has been utterly underwhelmed with how much he's actually enjoyed playing it. Um, I don't know I, I don't know how the ending goes, but apparently the end of the game is not Oops. quite the end of the game or something. I, I don't know how it works. But, yeah, there's um, an epilogue. He said that he has no drive to play this epilogue because the game itself has just drained him of anything for it. Um, so sticking to Assassin's Creed um, I, I think I said the last time I was on from what I'd played of it it's the best one in the series and having advanced a lot further on I, it's it's not even close um, as much as I used to think as the Ezio games were going to take some beating this one's fantastic uh, between the setting um, things like the arena that you can go in and battle like the gladiator re- arena um, the, the introduction of the Greek gods um, even just the story um, of because you can sort of see how they're trying to link it to how the Templars work um, it's it's by far and away one of the best single player games I think I've played this year dang how um where did um, Origins sit for you I barely touched the Origins I think I'm oh a, really I think I'm about reached about level ten. And that was me giving up with that. Um, I just found Bayek's character basically cardboard. Um, oh, what? Yeah, I don't like him. <laughs> I, don't know about, I don't know if I agree with that. But yeah. I, I don't agree either. I love Bayek, I the sheriff. Didn't like him whatsoever. Um, 
that makes it tough to play a game for 60 70 hours if you don't like the main character so i just feel like it was i don't know if it's because of where this one's set um but i think there was a lot of rinse and repeat in all the uh, in origins it was sort of more like fetch quests do this do that and although odyssey's got quite a few of the same type ideas i think just the way it's laid out with um sort of ancient greece it just makes it so much easier to delve into and get in, like actually get engrossed in the game. I I will agree. Setting wise, um, Odyssey is probably the better game for me at least. Ancient Ancient Egypt's cool or whatever, and I really liked Origins, but yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. I need to get back into Odyssey, but I feel like I owe something to Red Dead, <laughs> and I need to finish it. Um, what I was going to say about Red Dead quick was that it, do you guys think that there's a point where like games like this are just like it's too realistic and there's too many mundane things that it really like it's awesome how accurate of a representation it is of what the Old West may have been like but yeah, I think it... if you spend less time worrying about whether or not your horse's testicles shrink in the cold and whether you actually have fun <laughs> playing the game it's usually a fine balance between the two of them <laughs> I do Fair. find uh, Fallout I, 76 was the same for me with the, you know, you have to eat, you have to drink. Um, but I obviously, hate that shit. I didn't know that was a thing in Fallout 76. Yeah. 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 That's the thing. See if, you play, see if you've played any of the other previous Fallout games in survival mode, the, like the hardest difficulty setting. No. Nope. No, no, no. Comparing, <laughs> easy. Com- easy. <laughs> comparing that to 76, it's two totally different games. Playing it in survival mode on, say, Fallout 4, for example. It's so much more brutal than it is on 76. 76 is a cakewalk to keep yourself hydrated, keep yourself fed, because it gives you the tools to do it really easily. Whereas in four of that, it's a nightmare. They even so, had a mod for Skyrim, which made it even harder in the sense that you had to build fires out in the cold where you would freeze to exactly, death, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, Gosh, a mod. Which, it was a mod, which was but a yeah. fantastic mod. Yeah, yeah. I feel um, like we're two very different gamers. <laughs> I do think Red Dead, though, made a hard bet on the fact that we're going to make this realistic in terms of how far you have to travel for stuff, on the fact that you can't, you don't fast travel and you're going to be riding your horse to stuff. And I felt like they, they bet really hard on that as a thing that would people would appreciate as a realistic factor, and then it just ended up being tedious, mono, like monotonous, basically. You know, just like, See, oh, I agree with you, Doc. I think... When a mission takes you half an hour to do, and the majority of that half an hour is riding to right. the mission, riding yeah. back to the mi- or away from the mission, or from the mission back to base. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know the actual thing that you have to do takes minutes. If that, yeah, it's not it's not great when my most the most excited I get is when the end of a mission it just sends me back to camp and I don't have to ride to camp where it's just like <laughs> well oh god you camp <laughs> and Wonderful. we're also forgetting the whole very very easy fail like ways to fail out of a mission too like if you sway from the path too far or if you something goes wrong that's not even your fault and some of those checkpoints aren't very generous either so you know there there were times that made the long ride to the mission even worse depending on if you had a bad like failed mission or something like that so um and as much shit as it sounds like i'm talking i really do love red dead a lot yeah with all that said it's a fantastic <laughs> but I underst- game but... i understand where everyone's coming from with the complaints and yeah. negative points about that game and i think that'll definitely be something that's factored into a lot of people's game of the year discussions so but Definitely yeah. one of those things where it seemed like that was going to be number one with a bullet game of the year, and I would probably argue to say that it's probably not going to be most people's game of the year. It's not mine. No. Spoilers. It's not mine either. <laughs> I don't think it's even probably top three for it's me. It's Mario Party. You're welcome. Pack yes. it up, boys. Easiest game of the year I've ever had to give out. <laughs> That's on the Switch, right? Oh, it is on the Switch. <laughs> oh, good. Chocolate, you better get in on this year's game of the year. Yeah, I've got some catching up to do with you two, haven't I? <laughs> the story go the story goes some wild places on this one. They they really went out on a limb. <laughs> You're just the worst. <laughs> I'm just I, t- I give it props where I can, man. It's just uh, it's pretty. Um, all right. Did you have any final things on uh, AC Odyssey, Chaotic? Uh, no, just a um, as we're saying, um, really enjoying it. Really enjoying the story. Uh, really enjoying the landscape. Um, probably going to be one of the first of the sort of. New Assassin's Creed. I'm talking maybe like Black Flag, 
um, anyone talking from that that'll actually invest probably some money in the DLC. Um, I didn't bother with any of the rest of them, just didn't seem value for money, whereas this one I think is going to be the first one that's caught my eye enough that it's going to make me want to delve in and spend some more money on it. Yeah, the trailer for that first one actually yeah. looked yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. So I would understand that purchase. Um, guys, I was going to say, can you correct me if I'm wrong? Did they say they were going back on a two-year cycle on AC games now? Yes, I think so. I think there's okay. nothing just, coming was, next year. As far okay, as I was wanting to, I was wanting to check on that. I couldn't remember if I misremembered or what. So, okay, cool. All right. Well, um, anyone have anything to add? Anything we didn't talk about that you want to talk about quick? Uh, Subnautica. If anybody hasn't played that, give it a look. It's getting ready to go out of preview program 1.0 on console. I think it went 1.0 on PC back in March or April. But uh, really, really, really good game. Probably Underwater more. Journey. Yes. No. 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 <laughs> this is a. This is more of a underwater Minecraft action. Well, not even that. But oh, the, what the? Oh, Abzu is underwater journey. Yeah. I'm, yeah. That was underwater journey. Yeah. Um, Subnautica is like. Um, I guess it is like a survival sim, sort of, but not hardcore in that direction. But you crash land on a water planet. You have to survive, build up an underwater base. Your end goal is to take, a, uh, basically, build up a, a spaceship to get off the planet. Um, but it's really, really good. Um, highly recommend it if anybody likes any kind of like... I, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe this game other than just underwater sim, but it's there's a lot to it. And you can build a sweet underwater base, and every time you go on your base, it says, Welcome aboard, Captain. So it's pretty awesome. <laughs> there you go. Sold. That's the pitch. <laughs> good deal. Um. Real Gamer Score Podcast. We are out to battle it once again on Saturday, the 8th of December, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, is your downfall. The game is iDarb. People, come watch us. This will be hosted across Mixer, and you will watch how Cross Atlantic Gaming will destroy. Real Gamer Score Podcast once again. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, how about we get into some news? All right, Doc. What is in the news this week? So pretty brief this week but the big thing coming up uh thursday um is the game awards uh it's the one that jeff Keeley host uh, uh hosted last year the thing that everybody probably remembers is the f the oscars guy uh from the game get out um but uh that's coming back it's gonna be this thursday december 6th at 8 30 eastern if you're not in my time zone get wrecked um yeah Past my bedtime. <laughs> uh, or yeah, add five hours for GMT. Um, so yeah, that I guess that will be pretty late for you, child. <laughs> um, so basically, the bi- the reason I'm bringing this up is because um, last year we got some new uh, game releases teased first first time announcements or world premieres, I guess they call them. Um, they've actually touted that this game show will have anywhere from ten to twelve new game announcements never before seen. Um, and so I'm basically going to kind of go through a, a list of three uh, that have been basically confirmed and kind of see what your guys' reaction is to these. So I'll just name one off here and see what you guys think. So the first one up is New Borderlands 3. Game of the year, best game ever made. No game will ever need to be made after that game. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> there goes our game of the year show. You work for Take Two, uh, Chaotic? <laughs> no, but the Borderlands no. games are just the most amazing games ever. I don't disagree. Yeah, they are good. The humor in those are just top notch. Yeah, best absolutely. Ever. I, I got one of them way, way, way too late. Um, I, I basically I played it in all the. What was it? The, you know the gold keys. Yes, oh, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. Basically, by the time I had picked up on it, every single code that had ever been made had been used up. So that'll tell you how long behind I was on oh, uh, Borderlands. But 
so so glad I picked up the handsome collection. Yeah, uh, uh, the uh, art style holds up pretty well. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion too. If so. um, if Handsome Jack doesn't get an award as like the best video game villain ever made, then it's a travesty. That was the tale. Was that the Telltale origin story of Handsome Jack? Was that how that story went? Handsome I Jack. It yet. Handsome Jack was in it, but it um, wasn't like it was. <laughs> He was in it, and he did play quite a prominent role, but you don't get as okay. much um, in that as you do as in sort of two, and obviously the story from pre sequel. Oh right, right, yeah. I was gonna say I don't. I have never beaten a Borderlands game. I've played like a decent amount of each of them. I just, for whatever reason, can never seem to get all the way through them. But um, yeah, Handsome Jack from even from my limited time with him in Tales from the Borderland, uh, he's he's good. It's the fact that it's it it shows you the, the quality of a game where obviously that whole game is based on your sort of your legendary weapons um, and your legendary class mods, your legendary skins, whatever it is. The fact that you can go through that game and play maybe a hundred of the same bosses in the same setting just to try and get the exact specification of legendary gun that you get and not get tired of it tells you how good the game it is. Yeah, that, that game made the all about loot a thing that was really cool. And, you know, like the, here's a, you know, the color coding loot and everything. And just, you'd open up a chest and guns would just go flying out. Like, that yeah. game was so cool about but that the, stuff. Because even when they launched it, they're not saying there was, like, a trillion combinations of guns that you could have. Uh, totally, yeah. Because, like, even to this day, like, when you when you would see just how the random generator, or the inner workings of the game's random generator for guns would give guns, like, oh, this looks like the gun I've had before, but it shoots this random different type of energy and it yeah. it's like got a scope on it or something like yeah it's crazy the stuff yeah. you can get yeah, it's a fantastic um, system um one that like ever since i first completed borderlands 2 i've been mon- like desperate for borderlands 3 to be announced and you always hear these trailers of borderlands this borderlands the next thing and nothing's ever came of it oh randy pitchford's been saying it's a thing for the past 50 exactly. years exactly so, so. So it, it, we knew it was coming. As just, much as uh, people are saying that this is going to be confirmed at this Game Awards, until I physically see Borderlands 3 coming 2030, I still won't believe it's a thing. Yeah, I agree. Um, other thing about it, too, is that uh, this is uh, coming from a trade. A couple of these new stories are, are thinking they're likely rumors due to trademarks that companies made. Like the like this the leak, the leak week leading up to the Game Awards, and most of the time... Companies only do that if they're getting ready to make an official announcement. Um, mm-hmm. They do that just so if the trademark doesn't leak it ahead of time. So, um, okay, next up, uh, how do you guys feel about a new Dragon Age game? Also, never beat one of those. <laughs> uh, See, now, I loved the first two. I now, I should have beat Inquisition. I haven't yet, but I loved all three of them. Honestly, um, if they can, if they can do. I feel Dragon Age, the newest one Inquisition, gets a really rough deal because it didn't make a very good strategy of releasing two or three months before the greatest game ever made. So, <laughs> when you try and bring a, out an RPG... Did a Mario Party game come out that year? Or? <laughs> Must have. <laughs> okay. When, when you try and bring out a, an RPG X amount of months before you bring out Witcher 3, um, you're yeah. doomed to fail. Um, if That's they fair. can learn, If they can learn from the Witcher 3 and take because very similar type of games if you can take as much as you can from Witcher 3 and put it in Bo- um, Dragon Age's storytelling then they'll, that'll be a great game yeah Dragon Age Origins on 360 to this day in my opinion is still one of the best oh, that was like the story game. games yeah ever exactly it was I a fantastic was it. game oh, so and good they let themselves down with 2 2 wasn't as bad as some people give it as rap for yeah, but certainly two- the weakest in the series yeah, two gets a bad rap, and I have the same issues everybody else does with it. They didn't. They you could tell that game got rushed because you would go in a dungeon. And it's like, oh, I've been in this dungeon five times over. It's the same yeah. dungeon layout map. It's just different enemies, and like, they they definitely suffered from that problem of a, of a rushed game. But I still thought the story was pretty good in it, though. Yeah, the story um, was a good uh, twist on it with the whole yeah. mages and templar type yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's uh, now this one is basically this one is definitely confirmed because Obsidian has been releasing teaser material for this uh obsidian and 
uh, they had talked about at the Microsoft acquisition that they had a secret project in the works that they would uh, divulge later, and it seems like later is relatively soon. Um, there is a new sci-fi RPG coming from Obsidian that will be uh, revealed at Game Awards. Um, I should have included this here, and I apologize I didn't for you guys. They basically released teaser material. One is like like different food ration things and like a, when you travel to space make sure you have the proper nutrition and the other is like a space laser pistol and it's like be sure you have the right equipment and it, it almost has like a Bioshock feel to it almost. yeah it's like advertising different companies and things like yeah, that that part of yeah. The game. yeah I've um, seen that yeah, and they did hint that it would most... Now, this hasn't been confirmed, but a lot of people have hinted that they think it is likely to be a PC RPG. Um, that's not confirmed, but we do know it's definitely a sci-fi RPG of some sorts. Um, this might make the acquisition uh, that Microsoft made even make even more sense because it's one thing if you acquire a company and you're like, well, they'll have a new game four or five years from now, but Microsoft was probably talking to them and they were like, yeah, we're working on this other thing that's like two years out, and Microsoft's probably like... Oh well, if we buy them, they've got an exclusive coming for us like fairly soon. Yeah. So, I mean, if they maybe can, that was the thought process. I mean, I can imagine everybody, it's going to be sort of a similar type of idea. But if anybody can make a game like they did for Fallout New Vegas, but with a sci-fi twist, it that could oh. be scary good. New Vegas was so good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The best of the Fallout's. That, in my opinion, best Fallout game. Yep, I agree. Yep. Um, let's see. Last bit of news: uh, it was it was rumored for a while that Rocksteady was not was working on a Superman game, and that it would be revealed and started picking up traction that would be revealed at the Game Awards. Rocksteady come out and said two things: one, they have nothing to reveal at the Game Awards, and two, their new project is not Superman related. Son so, of a... thank God. So we'll yeah. still we're, we're still <laughs> la- we're <laughs> we're never gonna get a good Superman game, guys. Just give Do up on it. Do you think you could have a good Superman game? I I no I. Anything's possible. But I mean, think, think about it. how you, how would you do that? You are basically everyone I don't know. has kryptonite bullets. I, yeah, and that's it. Exactly. You would have to have <laughs> so many different. Like, unless you were starting off for like Smallville type idea, where you didn't have yeah. all your powers and you had to go through the game to unlock your powers. Yeah, maybe that could be okay. Maybe that's the only way that <laughs> they could feasibly make it work. Really, yeah, just I RPG agree. the hell out of it. Just yeah. But then it wouldn't be Superman, would it? It'd be like Superman in training. Yeah. It's like, guys, I'm, I'm grinding out uh, these random missions. At level 50, I get laser eyes. It's yeah. Superman great. Origins. <laughs> yeah. Well, could be, maybe. Um, last bit of news on the Game Awards. You can vote on the games in the various categories on the official website, I think up until the day of the awards, maybe. I'm not exactly sure about that, but at least as of this recording, you can still vote. Um, tons of different categories on there, so... Lots of games I've never heard of either, <laughs> so they really uh, had a lot of varied categories. But, Don't you uh, love that, though? Like, I love it when games pop up for awards and I've never totally. heard of them. It's just yeah. one more game that I could check out yeah. and uh, buy and not play. Not play. <laughs> just, <laughs> just show, it, does, it is a cool thing, though, like Rissy saying. It does show you how varied and like how many different types of games are coming out nowadays to where we're plugged into this scene and we don't even know about all this stuff. So, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty cool, though. Um, Anyways, yeah, that's on, again, Thursday, 8.30 Eastern. Um, a lot of new uh, release trailers and stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, Washington, D.C. law firm is discussing the idea of launching a, a class action lawsuit against developer Bethesda Studios. Uh, this comes via Gamer Rant. Um, this stems from the steep price discounts that occurred within, week, uh, within a week of the game launching um, and the game company's refusal to issue uh, refunds to cert- to some customers, um, although that seems like that's kind of sporadic on the reporting on who got refunds and why. Um, I'm going to pass this on to you, Chaotic. Uh, I don't know if you checked out this story much, but what do you think about the uh, the uh, this kind of potential lawsuit against Bethesda? I don't think what from what I heard about it, it was to do with the. There was there was two different ones that people were complaining about. The first one was uh, basically they had lied about the product, so they were asking refunds. Um, and from what I remember, Bethesda saying that as if they had the physical copy, they were going to see if they were able to do something. But for people who did the digital, they had no way of refunding them for it, so they just had to sort of suck it up and deal it. Um, and then the second one that I had seen was if you bought the Power Armor Edition, you were meant to get like a, a canvas bag to store your uh, T-51 helmet inside 
and it turns out that the bags that they launched were cheap sort of nylon tent material and the oh, cam yeah. but I, I guess better the canvas ones that they had designed were real but they had given them to like influencers so people to promote the game not the actual people who are oh, yeah, investing the hard earned money to buy the games that's not good it is so, one of those things it's like Fallout is shooting themselves in the foot more than they need to on yeah, a lot of this stuff it seems like they are properly making a, a rod for their own back here I can understand the expectations and people complaining about that I can see where they would go well it is what it is it is buggy but all other games have been buggy um, it is an online game there is story there nobody said that there was NPCs in it so we're not lying about anything so I can kind of see where they're coming from there but the, the bags oh my god what the hell are Bethesda playing it? the story actually gets better on that did you know that the way they compensated people for that was by giving them game? digital credit well it gets worse. They gave them 500 in-game atoms. That's actually not enough to buy the in-game equivalent to that no. item. <laughs> yes. I've seen that as well. I yep. was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, so like, I, like, I'm like, is there anything else you guys can do to really kind of give yourself another, like, more problems? Because, like, I think they're actively trying at this point. Yeah, so. I'd seen some horror stories to do with that as well. Yeah. So going on the discount thing, I was going to say, in the UK, you have, if if you buy something and then it goes down in price within 28 days, Not in you're able to go to the store and get a refund of yeah. the difference. That's um, also up to... that's a, Also that goes, retailer is, specific, yeah. Is it not yeah. at discretion as well? See, we no, all, you all have a lot more consumer-friendly um, standardized laws and business practices. Yeah, yeah. Laws and business practices. <laughs> Here, ge- most, most companies generally, because it, in today's social media and everything like it's in their best interest to take care of the customer in a more fair way but yeah. there is no standardized laws for a lot of that stuff here though like what um, you guys are talking about yeah yeah um i i don't know you guys can tell me how you feel about this but i also feel like if you know a game is launching a week before black friday don't buy it isn't that kind of on the consumer's <laughs> fault at some point to be like i don't care how new something is it's going to get discounted on black friday yeah. that so, was yeah. like I didn't pick up AC Odyssey when it came out, and I got it for $27 like a month later or a few weeks, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. so, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I, it seems like I, can, I, I, I could be wrong, but I don't see this going anywhere, but also not a lawyer, so. Um, let's see, moving on. Uh, In Exile uh, is working on a full Wasteland 1 remaster from their, this comes from their official Twitter account. Um, this is an addition to Wasteland 3, which is still coming, presumably, next year. Um, I can always speak about Wasteland 2, because that is the game that I have played. This uh, should be noted that we just got through talking about Fallout. In Exile is f- a lot of former devs that made the first two Fallout games. Um, which were much more in line with what Wasteland with, is. Exactly, yeah. W- Wasteland, if you th- Wasteland is, in effect, the spiritual successor to the first two Fallout games. I mean... Right. Um, but Wasteland 2 is fantastic, and I would recommend anybody pick that up and play it. It is a really, really good game. It's um, coming to the Switch. It is, yeah. Um, and uh, Wasteland 1 I've never played, but this might be a good excuse for me to finally play that. So, um, Any of you guys checked out Wasteland, might have interest in playing it? or mm, I'll wait for 3 or play 2 on <laughs> my Switch. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> I will say too. I'm going to be interested to see. That's another potential darkest dungeon situation with some of the uh, the text uh, being way too small. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to translate. I and I think it could be worse than darkest dungeon. So I, I'm, oh God. I'm going to be interested to see how that pans out. But um, anyways, moving on. Um, this uh, this comes from a a uh, insider in the industry via Twitter. Uh, Microsoft is not done acquiring game studios. Uh, this comes via Clobriel. I don't know if any of you guys follow him on Twitter. He's basically a, he's a game dev and he's also an industry insider. Closest thing I would call him is: Do you guys know who Shinobi is on Twitter from Reset Era? Anybody? No. Sounds like a ninja. Yeah, I was going to say. Wasn't that a game? Yeah. <laughs> and it, it was. It was. It's also a guy that that's his it's his username and he has like a Newman from Seinfeld as his avatar, but. There's like three or four of these guys that are kind of like industry insiders that usually end up breaking a lot of these news stories. Um, kind of like, think of like Jason Schreier, just not official. Um, 
But he uh, came out on his Twitter and said, "All right, let's get the elf. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Microsoft Studios growth isn't done yet. They are in active talk with multiple studios, both big and small. Some of which might surprise you more than others. It's er, it's too early for all of them, though. 2019 will uh, will continue the story. Um, I think this goes right in line with what uh, their CEO uh, Satya Nadella said the other day with how they were building a." Game Pass is a Netflix style service and much like Netflix with their own, you know, Netflix has a lot of their own internal studios that makes their own content. I think that's how they're structuring Game Pass now. Um, and yeah, uh, it seems like they're still in talks. I, there was some people talking on the thread saying anywhere from like, some people were saying crazy stuff like five to 10 additional studios, which I don't know about that, but you know, who knows? I mean, um, what do you guys think about the possibility of even more studios getting acquired by Microsoft and getting even more content for Game Pass? Can you have a negative thought about it, really? <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> right? I, know. I mean, the is anything thing, about this bad? <laughs> I wouldn't say it's a downside. The only thing I would say is it's all well and good buying up all these studios. See until we actually see some sort of end product from them. It could just be buying a whole lot, load of nothing. Well, and I will... I think the thing that they're kind of doing that helps, though, is bad or worse when you buy enough of them, you've at least got content in the pipeline coming regularly. You yeah. Know? I mean, th- um, obviously it can't happen, but if, if, yeah. Xbox the- Thunder, or if Microsoft Thunder and said, we've bought Rockstar stuff, then Ooh, that, that blows the doors off the industry. Up until this point, like Playground Games, for example, that was kind of an exclusive already when you think of all a four right, and things right. like that so undead labs few of those yeah, yeah yeah until like obsidian that's a like most people have heard of obsidian if they've played fallout that was quite a big oh right that's that's they're trying to make big moves here until they've got a studio underneath them like them that they can go wow that's that's really impressive like naughty dog for example for playstation yeah when, with yeah, uncharted I mean, uh... you know, so trying to think of other ones out there probably like sucker punch might be not sucker punch but uh what's the uh, insomniac games that might be the one out there that might be probably the biggest kind of yeah. name still left probably that's not owned by somebody um or like you said rockstar um yeah i i don't know i mean there, there, there's a lot I, the, the way i look at this though is it definitely takes the pressure off a lot of their studios like uh the coalition or 343 to where this allows them to take even longer on the big AAA games and make them even better. Whereas before, it's like you know Microsoft was counting on them to Halo not only make yeah yeah Halo like you, they had to, they had to bring yeah exactly you had to bring them out every two or three years and they had to be a hit and if they're not it sucks you know. To whereas now it's like they've got time to cook them in the oven and they've got other stuff coming out theoretically now you know exactly. So um, as long as they don't stand on their or sit on their thumbs and kind of just ah be fine well like they actually have content coming out yeah, yeah and you know kind of, like, of it you know hey you know the next halo or the next gears is kind of like a, a half-assed work because they know they've got three or four other titles that are going to come out it could it could flip side be a really good thing because if you think like take the take fours out of the equation because we know that's like an alternate horizon normal horizon normal that's as close to like a madden they've got yeah pretty yeah. much if you yeah. were to think about it if they staggered depending on the success of these studios you could essentially have like every e3 you could announce one year you could announce some sort of halo game and give it two two years to come around totally. to the next one yeah and you could do the same with gears because although they're your two sort of blockbuster franchises as long as you've got x amount of games coming from these other studios to be announced to e3 people people are quite happy by it what they don't oh. like is when you announce one game and then four years down the line it's still not released aka crackdown well D- yeah like yeah like you're saying like let's say they even out after 2019 and have 12 studios that's every every year you could have three studios coming out with a game and out in four year cycles I exactly. mean theoretically you know um, not only that but like I'm actually excited for the new Gears and Halo because I don't know if you guys have kind of looked it up but Gears and Halo were on two and three year cycles they have both taken way longer 
currently to come yeah. out. Like the new Halo should have been out two years ago, and they've taken and there no, there's no indication it'll even be out next year. Like they're clearly cooking up something big for both those franchises. Yeah, so, the battle royale modes they got to polish them up. <laughs> yeah, the, you mean at hey, the man? They've already got ODST <laughs> dropships and stuff. It's there. You know? Can you imagine what a Gears battle royale would look like? <laughs> I, I can't. Hey, hey, what if the, hey, right here, you're welcome, Microsoft and Coalition. I'm giving you a freebie. What if from the sky you instead emerge from an e hole and come into the map that way? Pop what if? Yeah. Oh, completely it. different. Totally There's... different spin on the franchise. You're welcome. So, how are you selecting where you're coming up in the map? <laughs> uh, details. We'll All right, that later. That's for I'm them just, to do. Can't I'm just the idea guy, risky. True. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, chocolate. I, broke, I cut you off there. No, I was going to say, that, yeah, let them do the work on that. But I was going to say, I can't be doing with a friggin' shotgun battle in Gears Battle Royale. Oh, yeah, that would drive me nuts. <laughs> that's, that's why I never got into Gears Online. I just couldn't deal with the, no, the shotgun. Yeah. Um, anyway, terrible. so that's what probably makes this story even more believable is the last story we've got. <laughs> it's a two-parter. Microsoft last year, as much as people want to, you know, talk about they're not the industry leader in the video game department, they uh, made an excess of ten billion dollars fiscal year two thousand eighteen in the gaming division. It's a little bit. Um, money. <laughs> that's with a B. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is also piggybacking off the story where Microsoft just edged out Apple as the most valuable company in the entire world uh, yesterday. <laughs> Uh, now Ugh. it should be said that Apple and Microsoft trade, trade. They're so close right now that they trade off on this frequently in the past few months. But uh, they expect Microsoft to hold that title for at least the next few months. Uh, so that's uh, you know maybe gives even more credibility to the whole studio buying thing. <laughs> so you got the money, I, might it, as well spend it. And well, it's funny because people back when they first kind of rumored Steam and EA is ac possible acquisitions were like, I don't know about that, but it's like. I guess they have the money. They why? Why, totally why is it not doing it? Right. <laughs> yeah, they could do it. They have uh, the financial. <laughs> the fi Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, read that's that the thing. Day. If Microsoft yeah. wanted to, Microsoft could just go. Yep, we've got a new ga com gaming company. It's called Sony. <laughs> <laughs> they, I, they actually could. Check could me. People, uh, it was funny, Kotaku, uh, I think a couple years ago, did a write-up of what it would cost Sony or uh, Microsoft to buy off the Sony gaming division <laughs> separately. And it's something to where if they just wanted to crash the video game instability of the market, they could do it. Like that's a that's a thing. That's like, amazing. You know. Yeah, it was something uh, all nice. It's like obviously Bill Gates isn't directly involved with Xbox, but I read a fact that something like Bill Gates has got more money than you've got seconds left in your life. Yeah. Well, he's no that's longer horrifying. He's no longer tied. But definitely yeah, well, true. Also, that is true. Yeah. But he's no longer tied with them, anyways. At the company, I think he's pretty much fully retired he's pretty much actually if you look at what he's doing nowadays he's giving away a shit ton, ton of, money of money in charities and stuff yeah. he yeah. doesn't know what to do what uh, would you do if you get a bajillion well, dollars hey <laughs> fair <laughs> you're right why fair Jeff Bezos overtook him because he's given so much away to charity he yeah. <laughs> took himself out the top spot yeah. that makes sense yeah <laughs> so yeah I don't know um, I also read the other day too where Microsoft I didn't put this in here but they have uh, the game uh, well now this is split up among their divisions but uh, liquid cash on hand to purchase this is not anything tied up in properties or anything this is what they have that they could write a check for and withdraw it from the bank tomorrow they have over 600 million dollars in liquid cash to spend on whatever they want um, so yeah um yeah, so they, they, they can make stuff happen if they want to. But I, I kind of wanted to just throw that in there, piggybacking off the uh, – they might acquire some more studios. So, <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, that's that's it for the news, though. Like I said, big big news uh, will be next week after the Game Awards. We're expecting a few more. You know, we, we teased three announcements there, but there's supposedly going to be anywhere from 10 to 12 at the Game Awards. So I'm sure we'll have more to talk about after that. All right, news is done. Then let's get into – the monthly mailbag. You've got mail. So, um, if you'd like to take part in this you can email us at cagpodcast at gmail.com or dm us or we also put a channel up two weeks before this episode each month in our discord 
Um, and a lot of people utilize that. So there's a good place to be. Discord. We can't say it to you enough. Plug, um, plug. What? Plug, plug. Plug, plug. Yeah, hey, I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. You know what you didn't do, Doc? Uh-oh. You didn't write who no, any I'm, of these questions are from. Well, I did that on purpose because I've got pulled up right now the room with all the questions, and I wanted to do it this way so we didn't know who was asking them. Okay. <laughs> that is. I mean, I, it's more random that way, I guess you could say. I don't know. That's it's, fair it's, enough, and we will yeah. start now then. Um, <laughs> all right, first question comes in from Anonymous. Are you thinking of having meetups? Have you guys thought about this? It's tough right off the bat uh, because we're – obviously across the Atlantic. Um, so until we get that keg yacht funded. Uh, yeah, pick everyone up. <laughs> working on renting, yeah, working on renting out a community center in Iceland or somewhere in the middle. and uh, we'll make Iceland, it somewhere in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Just Geography. Go north a little. Uh, just a tiny bit. I think there'll be a UK version meetup before there'll be a US version meetup. Is that a competition? Is, I was going to say, because we have PAX East <laughs> coming up in March, and some of us have already talked about going. So. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, but we've all, yeah, but Risky, to, to counter you, we've already agreed that there's a few of us meeting up, and Chocolate's going to be our caddy for the weekend. So. Yeah. yeah, I've actually agreed Wait. that as well. well <laughs> Posh Bear's going to be your caddy? What? I can't Some, play golf. backwards. Yeah, I can't play golf. And by caddy, oh. we mean he's going to buy us one of the little golf carts that we can go around in, and he will just drive it for us. <laughs> No, no, I'll, I'll have I'll his get... butler drive it for you. Exactly. I was going to say, I was yeah. going to get Jeeves to drive it. He would just be there telling us what clubs to use. <laughs> um, but the yeah, metal one. As far as the meetups go, um, if anyone is interested in PAX East, uh, tickets apparently have been on sale because I looked over the weekend. Um, and Friday, Sunday, and Thursday passes are available to, or available still, uh, but Saturday ones are down. Um, I'll definitely be there. I think there's some other people from the community going. Um, so, I mean, nothing super official, but if people are at PAX East, um, hit me up. Um, and well, we can definitely set something up. But um, I don't know. Why wouldn't we do meetups in the future, right? be yeah, nice absolutely. to put some real-life faces <laughs> to names. I'm all for it. What? Hey, what are the odds risky that – we could make a goal like maybe two years from now that we actually do a live recording me you and chocolate in the same room do you know what i was just thinking that i was just thinking that a live well not like well could be even a live show or yeah it doesn't have to be but yeah live but you know consider the tent pitched i am excited <laughs> <laughs> well, all right well, are we gonna record it from like the woods like a camping trip what are we talking about Oh, that, that, that was going a completely <laughs> different way than I was. <laughs> Just cover, cover my ass here. Um, um. Yeah, meetups. Good idea. And we, <laughs> we'll work something out eventually. Um, yeah. All right. Next up, uh, since some of us have been playing Pokemon Let's Go, uh, oh, this question, Chocolate, I expect <laughs> a lot of input from you. Um, You're going to get it. <laughs> what is your favorite Pokemon? Uh, Doc, we'll start with you. Squirtle. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, chaotic. Yeah, hey, Blastoise. Oh, same family. I like it. Squirtle's got all the personality. So. Damn right. Right out. Uh, chocolate. <laughs> Anyone I can kill with my bare hands. Not <laughs> like okay, a, a well, butterfly. Not many of them. That got dark. Yeah. So uh, I would uh, just on the probably Pikachu is the only one that I like and that I know of. So <laughs> we'll go with Pikachu. All right. Um, I've always liked Slowbro <laughs> It's because he looks <laughs> so dumb And he has that stupid shell Just biting on his tail He's just the uh, doofiest don't thing Don't want to be overly geeky there But that Slow King Just oh. No sorry it's no Sorry that's No sorry I'm getting wrong Slowpoke Sorry I'm getting mixed up My bad. Slowpoke okay yeah yeah I like the one that has a shelter Attached to its tail Whichever one that is uh, And Cubone is my, my second place one can we talk about how they got lazy about naming? Because I was I was listening to Jack Bomb and apparently they named a Pokemon like Milk Cow or something like that, and it it's, literally just looks. It's not quite Milk Cow, but it's not a hundred miles off it. Uh, like I'm it's like, like Milk Cup get... or something. Yeah, I was like, did they get lazy with these? <laughs> it's like... Well, isn't in one of the last couple generations wasn't there one called Trubbish and it looked like a black <laughs> garbage bag? 
<laughs> I'm almost positive. No, that's that Oscar the Grouch from Sesame the Street. Police, You're getting your properties mixed up. The oh. Lacey since day one, they had three po- well, two Pokemon that were the same, like uh, Nidorino, Nidorina, and Nidorin, whatever the other one Nido is. Nido King, Nido Queen. Yeah. They basically I mean, like, changed the color of them, and that was all they did to make any difference. Shut your mouth. <laughs> a lot of time went into that. No, I'm just kidding. It, but, you, but at least they had fun with some of them, like Abra, Kadabra, Alakazam. They, got, they had fun with some of them. Yeah. But like, yeah, another one super innovative and creative right there. Well, <laughs> Abra, you know, Kadabra, whatever. Alakazam, I know. nailed it. I can get behind that more than I can, like, milk cow or something like that. It's like, oh, it's a milk cow. Yeah, it's a cow. Fair. Okay. Fair. Anyways. Um, all right. If you could remake one game, what would you choose, and what would you change to improve it? Uh, if anyone feels comfortable <laughs> answering, go for it. It's a loaded oh, question. Super Mario World, and to improve it, I'll bring it to the Xbox. Achievements. Ooh. Ka-ching. Ooh, nice. I think like we're talking like full-on remaster remake kind of thing? Oh, no, you've got to still have the, the glory of, you know, the kind of the 8, 16-ish bit kind of look to it but just a nice shinier color and nice. when i hit that kind of uh question mark an achievement pops out as opposed to a mushroom that'd be amazing what <laughs> I, I i don't know what i've taken today i am off it i love it <laughs> and doc yours is probably already answered because you're getting command and conquer right you know that might actually be be it. I was gonna make a joke about Super Mario Party, and I would just put a game in it. But uh, <laughs> these but jokes no, are I, never I'm gonna, gonna get old. I'm gonna, never. <laughs> no, I've, I've got to go with them now. Like it's part of my thing. So uh, no, I would probably say yeah, Command and Conquer because that was one of the first games that really got me into video games um, for sure. Um, yeah, and now they're remaking it, and you know we'll see how well that goes. I don't think they're promising too much. I think it's just a you know a fairly typical up res kind of thing but yeah that's probably the thing i would go with just off the top of my head all right chaotic you have anything off your top of your head uh, one that could probably open my can of worms i don't know how many of you maybe played it but 1v100 oh, oh man yeah that was a game that was why absolutely... haven't they brought that back the, there was the, honestly twitter for about the last since it since it finished on xbox live arcade since it finished to even current day People are still screaming at the companies, at Xbox, at everybody. When will 1v100 come back? Huh. I won some Microsoft points in that. I so never won that. the show, but I got quite high and managed to get some points. Um, the, uh, one oh. of community, uh, my friend in the community, uh, Gilgamesh, he actually got on to be the one. No, oh, no way. So he wasn't just wow. in the 100 in the game. He was actually selected and got to be the one that was That's in the main awesome. part of the game. Um, honestly, it was an amazing co-op experience um, how you improve on it don't get rid of it would probably be the best way but <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't don't let it die that would be the one that I would bring back especially with the new work that they've done with the avatars as well it's the perfect game to it tie does in seem like it would be the perfect time yeah sign that studio up I guess huh? <laughs> um, I was going to say do you think they've changed it though now with Major Nelson doing his on live um segment of the show they do a show now where um it's the same premise but he just asks the community questions or mixer and then you just press the buttons and yeah, then you can win something but then think about it i think it would make, i think what you could do with mixer integration and 1v100 yeah that too. Do, yeah i mean i totally so that, they that, could that essentially right could be like the soft groundwork of it yeah. yeah they could essentially go live on mixer or have x amount of different hubs going live on mixer that people joined the rooms at the time mixer was on and then that was your 1v100 Oh, yeah. They could do so much with it with the streaming services that are available now. Yeah, I, it, it does seem like they're way more capable of making that a thing. Yeah. Sign them up. Um, Definitely. For me, I was going to say Twisted Metal. I don't know if you guys played that back in the day. <laughs> Such a good game. <laughs> um, Twisted Metal was like a car, just like Demolition Derby, but you had guns and if you remember it was his name sweet tooth chaotic you remember that the ice cream yeah, truck it's the, it's, the, it's the clown yeah yeah, yeah. um a remake of that i remember having so much fun playing that game back in the day just with friends just driving around trying to kill each other being like on the top of parking garages trying to knock people off stuff like that um yeah i just want playground games to, <laughs> to make it as a uh, forza add-on yeah. What if I told you, Risky, that you could buy a $100 mini PlayStation um, that had it on it? I thought we were trying to upgrade it and make it better. 
Oh, never mind. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think Twisted Metal would be awesome. I have fond memories of that game as a child. That would be a perfect thing for playground games to make, though. That does seem like a no-brainer, like just a fun multiplayer type thing. I'd like to see playground games tackling how to put guns on rockets on the side of their vehicles. I bet you they can handle it. <laughs> They're creative. Um, all right, next question. What kind of game would you make? That is very broad. Um, <laughs> that is. I, I, I would make an Xbox Borderlands. game. I would make a fun game. <laughs> hey, <laughs> equally broad answer. <laughs> um, we'll start with Chaotic this time. Chaotic, what kind of game would you make if you were capable of making a game? Um, I think <laughs> it'd have to be open world uh, for a start. Um, I don't know. Some like this. <laughs> It's going to sound really bad, but a better version of whatever the hell Red Dead's going to end up like online. Oh. Um, the what now? The better version of Red Dead Online. Red Dead Online. Oh, gotcha. Well, yeah. So something, we'll that you yeah. something that you don't need to spend X amount of days trying to find your rest of your group in on this ridiculously big map that you can't flash yeah. travel on. Yeah. Um, I don't want to sound like a fanboy, but something along the lines of Fallout 76 an open world game that you can squad up in to make basically whatever you want to do in it. Minecraft. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Possibilities are endless. Journey underwater. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, good enough for me. Chocolate, how about you? To me, do, do you remember Doritos Crash Course? Oh, God, yep. <laughs> yes. Something like that. Another... <laughs> fun avatar-esque I'll say you just game. you just want a game where you can use your ninja avatar warrior. yeah ninja Brain. warrior-esque just that game yeah. was so fun though <laughs> it was cool and it was free wasn't it it was uh, it yeah. was great I don't know if you've had it in America but um, I know Chocolate might know of it I, um, there was a TV program in uh, the UK called Takeshi's Castle no <laughs> never heard of it <laughs> Takeshi's Castle as an Xbox game would just be oh yeah. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh Doc, how about you? Uh I would have said actually I was about to say I would have said Stardew Valley, but they made that because I was a big fan of the Harvest Moon games back in the day. But um no, I would totally do a spiritual successor to SOCOM one and two on the PS2 because that's still my number one and two game of all time to this day. Um got me into online gaming. <sighs> Had a clan going forever in those games it was just so fun and competitive to play those games online and uh yeah and it the, there's i don't feel like there's really a game like that anymore and maybe a game like that doesn't succeed nowadays but uh i would definitely want to do a, a good remake of of socom one and two yeah all right well you could have used that to answer your the last question two times before about what you wanted to remaster or remake but we'll take yeah, it i know but I don't. I don't think a remaster of those would hold up, though. Honestly, I think you have to do something. I think you have to add new stuff to it because they, they basically did that with SOCOM. I guess uh, the whatever one came out on the PS3, it wasn't SOCOM. It was after SOCOM three. Yeah, part of the question solve, is, what would you do to improve it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I know the answer to that. I just know it needs to come back, and I would want to improve it. I don't know if I necessarily have the answer to how to improve it, though. Yeah. I'm just being a dick. Sorry. Yeah. No. No. You're good. <laughs> it's, I. I don't have a good answer, though. Yeah. I, um. My answer for this, this is going to sound weird, but um, I always wanted to do like a life simulator, kind of like The Sims uh, or like Second Life or something weird like that. But each different part of the game was going to be super polished. So if you you're going to start off growing up, whatever, uh, and then say if you wanted to join the military once you had gone out of high school or whatever, you would literally go into a game where the combat was going to be like Battlefield 5 style. Like you would be playing Battlefield 5 essentially, like that polished of a game if you wanted to do that. If you wanted to be a race car driver or something crazy, you'd be playing Forza. It's just, it was going to be like a hub for all these super great other games, which, if any of this makes sense. Um, yeah, so it's just going to be like a hub world for all these other good games, but. It, you, it was kind of like The Sims too. Okay. If that makes any sense, in my head, it's so fun. You guys should try it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Once I pay my friends to make the game, I'll, uh, I'll give you guys codes first. Oh, it's gonna happen. <laughs> um, 
All right, next question. <laughs> what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen Xbox One X? I think chocolate should answer this one. Yep. Seven. All right. Seven. Seven units. Seven units. <laughs> Seven bananas Seven. with cream cheese. Great. I have no idea. I think that's probably as good of an answer as we're going to get out of that I question. Keep, I just keep rethinking the whole Monty Python scene in my head. That's such a good movie. <laughs> Where did you get the coconuts? Oh, I love it. Did anybody, nobody else here, anybody else here watch the Monty Python the Holy Grail? The coconuts are the horse. Oh. I know, but it's it's that same sequence of the joke, though. It's it's. And then oh, this okay. guy gets his arms and legs chopped off. Yeah, the Black the Knight. The, the, the rabbit. <laughs> Dude, I yeah. what behind the rabbit? It is the rabbit. When's the last time you watched that, and how often do you watch those movies? Because I think I've only watched it once, and all I can remember uh, is that stupid uh, scene. Pro- the honestly, probably back in high school, but I just, it's such a classic. Stuck with you. I love yeah. It. yeah. Um. All right. Next up with Xbox discless. Uh. Hmm. This is phrased weird. Yeah, you almost had my problem, didn't a you? Discless. <laughs> nope. Discless. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so with the rumor of this new discless Xbox um, and day one patches being what they are nowadays, um, do you feel that disc-based games are still worthwhile? Um, I will start and just say that I bought Assassin's Creed Odyssey as a disc game because it was $27. So as long as they keep on being cheap and able to be rented through Redbox, I think they're great. Um, but also, don't you... Like you still have to download the day one patches even for a, like a digital game though. I think yeah, I think more yeah. the fact of they, they can have them ready installed with digital games. Because the the Fallout not have that problem that they were going to have a massive disc update to do as well if you had it on the disc, but not if you had digital. Uh, I definitely remember something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I mean, I think that is the key though, because like yeah, it's like you said, the only time worth getting them nowadays is if they're cheap. But even then, you still have to deal with the problems of the you're gonna have a patch no matter what you're gonna have to update no matter what like i yeah i think the value in this base is gone other than just getting them cheap i will say i I stand by digitally completely i would much rather have that but when your game share partner doesn't want to split assassin's creed odyssey sometimes you got to buy hard copy what it did (laughs) that's what the only the only thing um, that you've got on the the benefit of having like physical copies is when you get the not so much now because they've ruined it, but like an ultimate edition before. I mean, I remember buying Gears of War. I, I can't remember what one it was. I think it was maybe even the first one, and I got a gold Lancer. That's awesome. So like not a not a solid gold one. It was just painted gold. But oh, thanks. Was... I thought you got a solid gold Lancer. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't say, lift I it say, Where do you live? <laughs> um, so things like that. Then I can see the way of, like the new Fallout um, with the or even the older one with the the Pit Boy edition where you got a Pit Boy or the oh, new yeah. one with the the power helmet things like that then i can see the benefit of buying a physical copy if you're getting something worthwhile of it but for just a standard edition of a physical game no but then all it's turning it into is really it's just a collector's item isn't it it's not you're not buying the game for the game you're buying yeah. the merch really well didn't well, mass effect andromeda have an, like a special edition that didn't come with the game or something like that. Same. There's been several games that do that now. Like, I'm sure like Save Decay 2 did the same thing. Like you could get this big collector's edition that didn't come with the game. And then so you can like, still get your digital copy and it's not like you're wasting sixty yeah. bucks. Yeah. So which which people at first got outraged about it, but then like I think Undead Last literally came out and said, No, this is the price. We can include the digital game with it if you want us to. Here's the price with it. We just gave you the option to get it w- or without the physical copy. Yeah. Like so it is but that's it is. good because that, uh, you know, people who want that extra merch, you can buy that and then have your still digital copy. I like that. Yeah, I, me too. And like Doc said, there was a lot of outrage about that. I for in my for whatever reason in my head, it's Mass Effect is the game I'm thinking of. But like people were pissed and it's like, oh, it's like two hundred ver- dollar version of this game. It doesn't even come with the game. But it's like, yeah, if you wanted it to include the game, it would be a two hundred and sixty dollar version of this game. So like, come on. Just know know what you want and buy it, right? I do think it got weird though because I know when they first started doing that trend, the way that companies, in a way, messed up was they would include the the 
hard copy case the game, but it just it wouldn't have anything inside it. And I'm like, probably wouldn't have included that at all if you were going to go that route. Like, because that just almost seems like a weird, like, want, want moment when you open up the case. Oh, it it's doesn't like, oh, come with the game. <laughs> there's nothing in here. Okay. <laughs> but uh, hopefully you're, I don't know. I feel like you should know these things. <laughs> like, know if your special edition of a game is actually going to have a game in it. That's something you should know before you hit buy now. Yeah, especially if you're going to pay that much money, depending on yeah what the you know the the package or whatever it is. Right. Um. So, uh, worthwhile, maybe slightly for now, but I think we won't have them pretty soon here, next couple of years. Yeah. Or we shouldn't at least. Um. All right. Next question. Favorite breakfast. Oh, this could get controversial. Uh. We'll start with a weird UK person because they. <laughs> beans for breakfast or something weird can't wait to hear uh, what made up thing they yeah, eat yeah chocolate go for it tell me how you're eating cookies or muffins or something weird no Pop just nubs. a l- lovely fried breakfast that's all sausage bacon eggs hash browns beans toast all right you lost nice me behind coffee. all that i can get behind all that <laughs> beans it's the musical fruit everyone needs to have some <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the I'm leaving it there. I guess it would. Okay, musical. No, I get it. It. Yep. it is musical. Yeah, there we are. Yep. I literally <laughs> never heard that until you just said that. So, oh. great. Um, chaotic. How about you? Favorite breakfast? It makes us quite American one actually. It makes us French toast, bacon, and maple syrup. Ah, yeah. Good choice. Good choice. Delicious. Doc. Um, everything both those guys said as far as the spread, but if I had to pick one, I would say biscuit, really good biscuit and gravy. I like really good biscuit and gravy. All right. For sure. And for me, I love breakfast burritos, all the best foods wrapped up yeah. in a burrito with some hot sauce or ketchup, whatever you're into. I don't hate. Does that have beans in it? No. What? <laughs> beans? You could put beans a breakfast in it. food. <laughs> I don't know who yes, lied to you. <laughs> <laughs> like when people are talking about spreading beans You're on toast, I'm like, are you, are you homeless? Or <laughs> that's what homeless people do. That's not what people that are eating breakfast do. Like, oh god, <laughs> I don't. Whatever, it is what it is. All right, uh, next question: Have you called in sick or late to work or skipped class to game? There's no way that anyone is going to say no. They haven't done this, but uh, Doc. You can go first. Uh, I definitely took PTO days on work, pay time off. I've never, ever called in sick or late to work just because I can't really do that with my job. But or skip class? Skip class did that all the time, <laughs> for sure, and play games. Uh, I got I, in, in ways to where I didn't even necessarily get penalized. Uh, it doesn't matter. I've graduated. I've got my degree. Now they can't take it back. But it would be like I remember law class in grad school. Uh, I, we had this little clicker, which, which we did our in-class in quizzes with. Um, and it was tied to your student account or whatever. I would, and I roomed with two of my buddies that we were in the same program, and one of them was super studious. He never missed a day of class ever, ever. Um, and me and my buddy, like if like Call of Duty came out or something like that, and we had went to the midnight release and stayed up all night playing it, we would just give him our clickers to go to class and click our answers for us, like we were there, because that's how they did attendance too. If if you if you participate on the quiz. So um, yeah, class all the time uh, would skip for games. Like if I remember. Skyrim came out in 360, and I stayed up all night playing that. Um, missed a whole day of classes afterwards. Yeah, definitely. Uh, how about you, Chocolate? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, just see ya. I'm out. <laughs> I will just no. Yeah, not even phased. I think I did Mass Effect one when I first got into Mass Effect one. I uh, I was definitely late for work a few times driving that bloody buggy and getting it lodged in a <laughs> blooming June or so. Oh, drove me potty. But yeah, I would uh, I don't care about work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way. And like, my work's pretty relaxed. So it's like, if I have a real late night of gaming and I don't show up to work till 10, it's kind of just like, well, stay till 6 then. Just make up the hours. But uh, college, yeah definitely oh for sure yeah gaming's way more fun than going to class so um 100%. and like you said doc using pto i do that all the time i think red dead was the last thing that i i took the day that that released off so yeah battlefield 5 for me it took like a few a couple days in there yeah um all right 
Next up, uh, who would you have in your own game? We should have paired this together earlier. Is there any anyone My special <laughs> that you'd put in put in a video game? Doc? Uh I don't even think I have a good an- I don't think I have an answer for this. I mean Terry uh, Crews is the right answer, right? But I guess that yeah, that 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 now we know that is the right answer. Our dream yeah. is coming true. Uh <laughs> that's just a little bit I have to wait a little bit longer. Uh I don't know, maybe Clint Eastwood in a Red Dead, maybe back in his prime, you know, oh, Western wow. prime. Uh I don't know, maybe something like that, you know. Um Um what about like Heath Ledger's Joker? Oh hell yes! Actually, that is the right answer right there. That is the answer. Pack it up. We yeah. just have to make that work somehow. <laughs> Working out have the logistics to... might be tough on that one. Yeah. Um. Damn. Yeah, that would man. That would make a Batman game for sure, though. Um, would you not pick a uh, Donald Trump in Fight Night Three? <laughs> All right. So next question: <laughs> If you could have any guest. <laughs> non-community member in the revolving chair who would you pick uh terry cruz <laughs> again <laughs> that's just chocolate's answer the rest of the way out doesn't matter the question but just... if you can't get terry cruz you need to get the next best buff guy and that's definitely the rock oh, yeah geez. charismatic dude the rock yeah, right for sure the and rock is would... the best person easy he would get beep slapped on chocolate's call out challenge oh, oh would could you sh- imagine oh. will you just oh, the next God. one you do will you just try to call out the rock and see if he just happens to hear it and Dude, gets back to you could you imagine how he how he would play off that too how he would how much into that he would get to like out oh, i'd show him my smell <laughs> no could you imagine how awesome beans. it would be though if he like he, if he if he went off on like a candy ass ran on chocolate bear like in the call out challenge like with full rock you know oh, oh my god Chocolate would piss but. himself. Right in his chair. <laughs> <laughs> right in his chair. I think it'll, I think it'll be a little bit more than piss, but anyway. <laughs> um, and I'd ask Chaotic these questions, but he had a power outage, so uh, Chaotic would have said, yeah, The Rock's a good answer, guys. Yep. Perfect. Um, all right. <laughs> Next up. <laughs> what embarrassing nickname did your parents call you as a child? Uh, chocolate. Did your parents call you anything? I'm interested. To no, my parents loved me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is awkward. What if the question was, did your butlers, maids, or cooks <laughs> give you any fun nicknames when you were a child? No, I paid them. They had to be nice. Um, no, Dang. my parents... No. <laughs> I don't think my parents ever gave me a, a nickname. No. All right. No, I may have been called some strange Italian profuse language Just names asshole and things like that yeah and there's a yeah that, that's maybe for off the air there's another <laughs> phrase that is uh, very rude some, <laughs> some memories are coming back in chocolate right now d- d- yeah I t- let's just say my backside and her slipper met quite often oh i had Fair. a wooden spoon i uh, d- see i broke the plastic spoon so she stayed away from the wooden and used the big <laughs> oh i got the belt so. the belt was about all belt's a good option yeah. Oh, we should gone too far. All right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're regressing. Oh, the memories. Uh, Doc, did you do you have any nicknames uh, you're not know. proud of? <laughs> not embarrassing. They, my mom and dad, even to this day, they they call me Ty. That's just short for my middle name, though. So it's not not embarrassing, but that's what they always called me. So. All right. Well, I guess I have the weirdest one. And it's not really even that weird, but my mommy's call me Zeba all the time. Because my first name's Zach. Were you from Krypton? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't think. Maybe. I w- Are you Superman? Uh, but yeah, she still calls me that to this day, uh, occasionally. So That's a pretty good one. That's that. Alright, uh, next question. Should people criticize a game based on what they've, uh, what they've seen, but having never played it themselves? Uh, I- I'll start. That no (laughs) seems like the most obvious thing in the world and i dislike these people the most that will talk non-stop trash about something that they never tried like don't hate it until you try it right that's how that saying goes um and the biggest example of this for me and i i think i touched on this last podcast actually was fallout uh 76 where it's like every person that i've spoken to that i like talk to on a daily basis or whatever they all love fallout but then it's like critically anything i read on the internet 
is all just this is the worst piece of trash in the world. <laughs> Immediately when you're when you view it, it makes your eyes bleed. Like it's just right. Yeah. So like, I don't know. Don't don't just take that and run with it. Like like you haven't, and like chocolate hasn't, and like chaotic hasn't. You guys all went in and actually played the game, and you're all really enjoying it. If you were someone that just stuck to the reviews that they saw online, you would have never even had a, the opportunity to get to see if you enjoyed it. So I don't agree with that at all, I don't think. It's always always super annoying when you go on Steam and you'll uh, read a review, somebody just like trash in a game, you go on their profile and look at their time played in game, and it's either none or like 15 minutes, and you're just like, okay, well, what the hell? Like, you know, it's... It's mixed though because I will say in in the day and age we live in with streaming, you can get a good interpretation of whether or not you will like a game from streaming though for sure you know, in the sense that like you could watch somebody play from beginning to end an entire game and you probably know whether or not you would enjoy it from that if nothing else. Yeah, completely. Uh, agree. You know, everybody's going to have a different experience, so maybe you couldn't quite comment on it on for other people but at least that aspect you could definitely tell like okay i'm gonna like this or i'm not gonna like this i've seen this guy play you know 20 hours of it or whatever but yeah that's fair yeah i think people forget about the fun factor as well don't they it's all very much you know 100 percent. this art style looks like this this game plays like this this has x or y bugs and it's like but did you but did you enjoy yourself yeah. And that's like Man. that's been the biggest thing like thinking ahead to our game of the year show. I'm putting so much thought into like how do I actually judge this because like the most fun I've had is playing Blackout with my friends like for hours and hours. Hands down. But is that my game of the year? I, I don't like to think so. So it's like where I don't know. <laughs> how do you yeah, weigh I come that? from it from an even I come from from an even different lens because I think if you truly make it a your top five game of the year, it it because if we're being realistic, if we just went by video game culture right now, our list would be in some order: Red Dead Two, God of War, Spider Man, uh, Mario Party. <laughs> Obviously, well, that's the one. I'm just I'm just giving the runner ups. I'm listing four. <laughs> this is for um, second game of the year. Yeah, um, it's you know, um, and then whatever you know, other big game, and that would be it. And you would put them in some order. But I think if you're truly making a this is my top five, I think you have to go with what had the most effect on you, you know? Like, I think it um, will get there. It'll be on my top five somewhere, but I... Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I've am i been struggling <laughs> with getting these five games into any type of order, so... Yeah, it, it's, it's tough. I mean, because you, you're right. Like, do you go by, like, if I had to look at this from a total package, what do I think is the best complete package? Like... Or how much do you weigh? Like, here's how much time I put in it. Like, there's a lot to weigh, for sure, in terms of, like, how you base, like, your, you know, list. And that's the thing with games like Blackout. The highs are really high, but the lows are also really low. So it's like, sometimes (laughs) I hate that game more than any game in the history of games. Gambit of emotions. Exactly. Um, All right, yeah. So I think we're all on the same page for that one. All right, next question. How did you meet your significant other? Chocolate, you're up first. Awkward. Um, I met her when <laughs> I was working um, at a train station. She was a customer at the time, and she, in the nicest, politest way, stalked me for a bit. Um, I may or may not have had uh, a girlfriend at the time. Um, <laughs> you could have made a lie, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the point i was balancing five women and you know just <laughs> well yeah let's just say my in my youth i was um i was active um <laughs> Good God. 15 Is years later we married that went the other way real quick <laughs> <laughs> my what? youth i was active i was active i, I enjoyed going out that was all oh yeah active uh, i went uh, to the gym fair. and stuff i got you yeah. yeah i got a load of cardio in anyway moving on oh doc how did you meet your other half um, I don't know if this is embarrassing or not, but it's kind of, I guess it's a, g- a funny story, if nothing else. Uh, I, uh, I'd always ever met previous girlfriends and stuff just through either like work, school, whatever. And, um, I decided it was like, uh, they were having some sort of deal, believe it or not, match.com. They were having some sort of uh, like weekend yeah. free deal. <laughs> it was like a weekend. You got like the, f- you didn't have to pay anything and you got the full, like whatever capabilities with it. And in that space of a weekend, I literally, uh, my wife, um, 
messaged me. I had viewed her, pro- viewed and liked her profile. She messaged me. We set up a date. She lived about a couple hours away, and that was how that happened. Literally from a free Match.com So weekend. best I free did. trial of your life. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> literally didn't ever actually have to pay for Match.com, <laughs> and I did a free weekend, and it worked. So Sterling, uh, uh, you know, uh, backing up your product, Match.com. It works. <laughs> is this so. where you get your uh, your value for money on everything as well? <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe that's a little bit of it. It's like, all right, I got to make this work because after this weekend, I am not putting another penny in this. So, <laughs> so good. Uh, yeah, but that's uh, that's how that happened. Yeah. Um, wow. And for me, I'm at the mag in a bar. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> the mag still going. The, the most romantic I, I, I just picture a giant poster of the movie poster of the mag just sitting oh. in a bar still. Just. <laughs> um, just the weirdest part about our relationship is that we went to the same high school, but I'm four years older than her. So I didn't even I didn't know her in high school and then met her in our city like that we're north of now. Um so many years oh, wow. later like a decade later and so that's kind of weird fight. Yeah, you had it's a good talk you had a good talking point to start off though right I guess, exactly the, it's like oh, wait yeah. you went to tully this huh <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna work gotcha <laughs> so yeah um all right next up where did your gamer tags come from uh, i will start i started as uh, risky god when <laughs> yeah don't even get me started um this was back i don't know the first time i ever had to make a username on a pc would have been where that started uh it then turned into risky kill it, it it's been it's been risky a long time ago it's just what comes before and after that has just always changed and i have no idea why it started way back then uh but i changed it to risky the kid because i was trying to get rid of having like I's and X's at like the front and backs yeah. of my name. So landed on Risky the Kid. Risky the Kid 420X. Exactly. Yeah. Luckily I didn't have to do that. <laughs> uh how about you, Doc? That this seems uh self explanatory. Used yeah. to be uh used to be uh Doc Coffee Forever and that's a playoff my last name is Coffee C O F F E Y and I just did the C O F F E E and I just did that forever and then I changed it to Doc H one X one as a playoff H one Z one or any of the zombie stuff, and just so I could unify my name across everything and just get it. So And Chocolate Bear, we touched on this last week, actually, I think. Yeah, most weeks I think we touch on it. It's Scrubs. <laughs> it's d- Vanilla Bear just doesn't sound right, and obviously Chocolate Bear does. I, that's fair. All right, easy enough. <laughs> easy peasy. Um, all right, next question. Is it time to wait to buy? Um, Our gamer culture is so bent on pre-ordering and playing something before others. Um, I myself have decided to wait to buy at least a month for any new game, not on Game Pass. Um, How do you guys feel about it? I think this Black Friday has been the biggest example of why you should be waiting to buy. um, Because games like Hitman and AC Odyssey and Fallout 76, Call of Duty, all these games that had been released uh, a month two months at the most before black friday we're all pretty much cut in half um how do you guys do you feel that this might be the time to be waiting before you buy chocolate i think it depends oh i was jumping in anyway <laughs> i was gonna say i think it depends on your your schedule and how much you gain um yeah for me i i have to wait because i can't i can't complete games quick enough and I don't have that much time, but that's fair. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Doc? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that's definitely like. I mean, like you just said, Black Friday, all this stuff. Like with Game Pass, I was already starting to lean that way because we talked about forever how we would get like burned on like. I got this game, never played it. It was in my backlog. It's on Game Pass. Great. Like you know, it's like I wasted whatever it was at the time. Like, so. Haven't been burned enough times on that now, and with you know how there's a sale, whether it's a summer sale, Christmas sale, Black Friday sale, whatever, there's always going to be a sale. And even if there's not, if it's a new game and check back two months later, it's going to be close to half off probably. Yep. Uh, um, the right answer is you never wait for sales; you buy it as soon as you want it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, AC Odyssey for me, it's kind of like if it's a multiplayer game, I'm gonna have a tough time not buying it day one like if it's call of duty and i know everybody's gonna be playing it day one i think i'm always gonna be in on those 
uh, at full price. But uh, games like Assassin's Creed or that stupid Uncharted game that I bought on Black Friday, both half off uh, because I waited. So single player stuff, I think I could definitely be waiting a little bit longer. Um, all right. Uh, next up, <laughs> what Pokemon would you have a, as a pet and why? Uh, chocolate. I'd love to hear your answer for this one. <laughs> I think I know. What because an electric be. mouse sounds like not the best house pet. Yeah, but I'm gonna go with Pikachu because he's gonna talk like Ryan Reynolds. Why would I not have? Oh my god, Pikachu! Can we talk about how I'm not gonna watch that movie because I can't get past the fact that I'm hearing Ryan Reynolds every second? Of the I time just hear Pikachu's Deadpool talking. for some reason. That's all or, I could or think Deadpool of. or yeah, I I don't know. Yeah, and then I can put Deadpool's mask over Pikachu, and it would be it's perfect. Pikachu. Pe- what? Pikachu. Pe- 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 well, this isn't weird at all. Pikachu. <laughs> Yeah, I did say poo you first, did. but I meant pool. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Goddamn beans. <laughs> Doc, do you have anything off the top of your head? I feel like the easy answer is Eevee because it's a dog. <laughs> but I was going to say like Meowth, uh, but Meowth, at least the one from Team Rocket, that that one's kind of a dick. But Yeah. Maybe, maybe a per- Persian. Persian for just yeah. A cu- yeah, for a cat. That's probably the easy or answer. Like yeah, I'm just going to go with Persian. A growl yeah, if, if it wouldn't light my house on fire, I think is a pretty good answer. True, true. Or like a Vaporeon, would I have to keep it in a water tank? Like, or if you get like a Charizard uh, and just keep it outside, but you can fly it, that'd be cool. Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. All good answers. Do you want a funny, uh, completely off tangent here? Do I? What? What do you think? Of course I do. So when I was picking up my switch, the guy looked at me square in the eye while my wife was standing next to me and said. So, do you want to buy Pokemon? And I looked at him and said, I'm almost 40. Do I look like I'm <laughs> Chocolate was offended. I was offended. As you picked up one, two, switch. That's probably the perfect 40 ish. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not 40, but you know, close enough. Close to. Yeah. On the wrong side of 30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slowly edging my way to 40. Uh... <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, all time favorite game console. Uh, Doc. It's tough. If I had to pick between my three top are SNES, PS2, and 360. Probably, probably would pick 360 if if just because Xbox Live and achievements ended up having such an impact um, on everything. PS2 is a really close second, if not top, though. And SNES is really where I first really got into gaming a lot. So, But I would say 360 would be my pick, though, with the PS2 a really close second. All right, Chocolate? See, I'm going to say 360 as well because of the integration of Xbox Live and opening me up to, you know, multiplayer gaming with probably, someone not next to you. It's, it's like you're saying, Chocolate, yeah, it's probably why I'm still into gaming as much as I am now, actually, looking back, you know. Yeah, um, and then uh, I had 10,000 Fists, on a, made friends with him through another friend on the 360, and then we've been friends ever since. So just that whole kind of progression, that I think is my... That definitely counts yeah, for the something. the reason why. Yeah, yeah it's, it's ridiculous. I think it goes on a couple of weeks ago when we were saying about how friendship, how you make more friends online now and play games just through gaming. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, uh, I mean, along the same lines, I would say one of, if not my favorite, would be the NES. And that was because that's, like, my dad had one. Um, so that was always around when I was growing up. And I played tons of games back in the day with my dad, um, split screen yeah. on the NES. So that's tough for me to be like, yeah, there was a better system. Um, a runner up for me would be the Switch, though. Like, with it being portable and the quality of games you can get on a portable system finally and like some of these ports we've had and just the whole idea of it it's so unique and different than everything like sliding the controllers off the side hand each person a part of your original controller and the two of you can play on this screen wherever it's small everything about it is small the little joy cons are small if you're using just one of those the screen's small whatever but I don't know. I love the Nintendo Switch a ton, so it's definitely Nintendo consoles for me, I think. 
I mean, if further we get away from it or, you know, how, how it ends up doing, it might end up being one of the top for me too, just because like you said, it took the idea of like the PSP or the PS Vita and like made it work in a big way. So like it made it rival these next generation consoles in its own ways, because obviously. Its, but yeah. And because of its popularity, it's getting ports now. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. So I'm going to get a whole week with it soon. We're going away. So I can't wait to utilize the whole kind of portability and game while the kids are asleep. Yeah. I Looking think this to is going to be great for you chocolate. I think you'll, you'll end up putting a lot of time on the switch. I think if you stick with it, it oh, just yeah. seems like you're always kind of like on the move or like if you have to be in another room you don't always have to pause and stop something or if you have to lay next to one of your kids it's like you can you can play the switch and do that <laughs> so right that'll definitely be good um all right what game from any console that the majority of people generally say is terrible um do you secretly enjoy playing i this is i kind of feels like a guilty pleasure game <laughs> i guess is that fallout 76 right now (laughs) (laughs) i mean yeah (laughs) fits um Um, any of you guys have answers off the top of your head for that so i normally go mainstream anyway but i think off what doc said definitely fallout 76 because of the hate it's getting those uh few hours i put into it and playing with a friend was was good (laughs) Maybe for me, Mass Effect 3, from all the hate it got for the endings, I still really enjoyed that game. I I so, still don't... Yeah, I don't know if I... I feel like I was tied that, up in the like narrative there. I didn't have any issues with Mass Effect 3, and I'll, I will say that yeah, out loud. I well, I thought it was fine. I didn't... The funny thing was, until you unless you replayed it to get a different ending, you would have never theoretically known anyways. Maybe so. that's what the issue was. Because <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah um, all right, this, is, this was fate. Like, this was going to happen, and... I yeah. am satisfied. That was like the, that yeah. was the early days of the. That was just the early days of the internet hate machine kicking up on stuff. You know the outrage. So you know it didn't get its full brunt of it at that point. Or I even guess. another one that like I think some people have come around on, but like Mass Effect Andromeda as another Mass Effect game. I feel like there was a ton of just unwarranted criticism against that game. Like some of the, some things graphically were kind of off, or the anim- the facial animations. Sure, they were kind of a nightmare. I one time had my person like bend <laughs> over and like s- crab walk down a set of stairs, <laughs> so that was real weird. Like that sounds like game of the year material. So, <laughs> I-, I saw those things, but the amount of hate it got, like Fallout, I think was unwarranted. Um, all right, and whew, we did it. One more question. Someone's typing. Um, all right. Eggnog and brandy or hot chocolate and peppermint schnapps. I've literally never had either of these. I just am not a big fan of eggnog. So for me, it's hot chocolate and peppermint schnapps. Yeah. Easy. Same same answer. I'm not a fan of eggnog. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, hot chocolate and peppermint schnapps. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I've had neither. I'd... Eggnog would just... The thought Cult- of it, it culture bear want- has had neither. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me want to puke in my mouth. The thought of eggnog. That's unfair. Yeah, I, I, I'm not far from that. I've never been a fan of eggnog. Yeah, I've tried it multiple times. It's never liked it. All right. Okay. Whew. I don't even remember the first question that was asked. How am I supposed to pick a winner here? <laughs> winner, winner, chicken, all right. Uh, out of all of these, does anything stick out to either of you as a best question? Man, why did everyone send in such mediocre yeah. questions? I'm going to go with unfair. the one that I think is mo- more thought-provoking is the embarrassing nickname did your parents give you as a child. Yeah, I think I will just because how good an answer Risky had. Too. You guys can just call me Zbot from now on. I will change it <laughs> in Discord and Twitter and Xbox. Of the of the uh, clan Zbop. <laughs> and that is the new name of our mixer bot, Zbop. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm fine with that. Sounds good. So, what well, we've Let's all been see, waiting uh, for? Who wrote in yeah, that question? Let me let me uh, look up that. Real Someone quick. knows that they won, and they're like, "Yes!" And we have no idea who you are yet. All right. So the winner is who was it, Doc? Uh, Chin Doctor. The Chin Doctor. Great. 
thought-provoking question, even though you guys did not have good answers for it. <laughs> my parents loved me. I was my boring. parents loved me. Yeah, so did Docs, apparently. <laughs> Mine yeah. are the evil ones. I really thought Chocolate was going to throw in one like, yeah, they used to call me Mistake, but uh, <laughs> no, didn't get anything like that in Chocolate. So. Uh, all right. Uh, no, I was told I was a mistake. Anyway, moving on. Well, they didn't want to just call you Mistake. That's, that's mean. No. Um, all right. Lastly, but not least, uh, I'm just going to breeze through these. This is new games for the week, plus some more stuff happening. Uh, new games coming out this week. You have Subnautica. It gets its 1.0 patch on the Xbox preview program. You have Just Cause coming out today, Wasteland 2 on the Switch coming out today, and at the end of the week you have Super Smash Bros. for the Switch, that's on Friday, uh, and PUBG for PS4 is also going to be this Friday. Uh, as far as DLC goes, we have the Battle for Geonosis uh, in Star Wars Battlefront 2, that is free and out now. Uh, that Star Wars Battlefront 2 is also in the EA Vault now. So that DLC plus the actual game is in the EA Vault. So if you have access to that, um, you have all of that now. Um, Free. Destiny 2's Black Armory Raid and new content is slated for this Friday. Uh, major patches going out. Fallout 76 has some major patches out now with a lot of quality of life improvements, um, including stash size, which I hear size matters, especially in Fallout 76. Uh Battlefield 5, Amazing. Tides of War's first content update is coming out oh, Excuse me, December 6th, so that's on Thursday. Uh, that's dropping a new map called Panzer Storm. It's the largest amount of tanks. Doc must have wrote this. Largest amount of tanks <laughs> in a Battlefield map ever. So ever. check that out. Cool. Uh, <laughs> coming to Game Pass um, in December. Oh, cool. Strange Brigade. I didn't know that was coming, so that was actually a shock to me. Uh, the Garden Between, Mutant Year Zero, Road to Eden, uh, which is debuting in Game Pass, so that's pretty awesome. Can't wait. Uh, Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, and Ori and the Blind Forest are all coming to Game Pass this month. Holy crap, that is a good month. Yeah. You do you, Game Pass. We love it. Uh, coming to Xbox Back Compat, this is the last section. To uh, these are 360 games: Kingdoms of Amalur, Amalur, uh, Sonic Unleashed, and Aliens vs Predator. If you didn't keep up there, I'm sorry, but uh, good stuff. All right, next up, let's plug this show up. I'm gonna keep this super brief Ooh. and just say that <laughs> if you want to find out anything about the show, just head on over to CrossAtlanticGaming.com. All the links to everything are on that website. Nailed it. Super simple. All right. I'm Risky the Kid everywhere. Doc, you are. Doc, H1X1 everywhere. Chocolate Bear. I'm Chocolate Bear 80, where it matters. And with that, <laughs> thank you, everyone, for tuning into this week's episode of Cross Atlantic Gaming. We'll catch you guys next week for an all-new episode. Goodbye. Bye. Peace. <laughs> chocolate uh yeah knock knock who's, who's there? there pikachu pikachu who <laughs> cough oh <laughs> <laughs>